Much requested. You couldn't believe the numbers that came in for people that wanted to see the Pierce Brosnan James Bond franchise covered in full by two idiots. Were we included in that? Did I get a vote? You didn't get a vote. Do you want to vote now? I vote no. It's too late. Ah, and I watched it. <laughs> and you, and you know what? It. I kind of enjoy, I enjoyed this one. This <laughs> Me is, too. It's not this Pierce Brosnan and Bond movie that I feared watching, yes. rewatching. It's all the ones after this. I feel because that's much like the Daniel Craig Bond mm. movies, I feel like the Brosnan era has a great opening movie, yes, and then a rapid decline. But and that's interesting because both Goldeneye and uh, Casino Royale both directed by Martin Campbell. Is that an accident? Probably not. They probably went. He made a good one. That yeah. was the last good one. Can we get that yeah. guy to come back? Let's get that guy again and they have diminishing returns for the rest exactly and look these videos also will be diminishing returns no doubt but hey leave a like on this one at the very right, least yeah this will be the best one hopefully because we've got a bunch of stuff to cover do you want to hear how pierce brosnan or maybe you know about this came upon this role i believe and you can correct me i believe i'm ready yeah <laughs> you're ready i believe he auditioned for it in the past yes but he was also doing a detective show called remington steel mm -hmm. and so he couldn't get out of that contract yes and so the role of bond was given to a different Bond? Timothy a different Dalton? Bond. Timothy Dalton? Timothy Dalton, that's right. It was the 80s. It was the edgy Bond. Well, yeah. one of the first edgy. There's been many Bonds. Do people know that? Do people know that? It's important to point that I out. Because people will probably tell us in the comments that there's been a few of them. <laughs> yeah. David Niven. Also a Bond. <laughs> also Not a Bond. officially. Woody so Allen, we don't talk about it. <laughs> so yeah, there was supposed to be a 1991 sequel, The Property of a Lady, based on the Fleming short story. But there were legal issues over the ownership and what happened because of License to Kill because it didn't do super well. There's always legal troubles with Bond for it some really reason. It really is, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. And so by the time it came Probably around... because Ian Fleming stole a lot of ideas. <laughs> Potentially. Mm -hmm. So by the time it came around to filming this one, the Broccoli family, you know, who, who run the Bond Absolutely. franchise. You know, you Barbara, know Barbara Barb Broccoli and the other... Bro Albert Cubby Broccoli. Cubby Broccoli. Cubby Broccoli. Yeah. They said, Dalton, you should come back. And he said, I'll come back, I'll do one. And they're like, no, if you come back, you got to do like four. Because it's sure. been quite a long time. You come back and you do one and then you kill the franchise if you run off. So he's like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do anything ever again, he said, that's, until Hot Fuzz. That's right. I'm and sure he I'm, did stuff in the then middle. Then I'm going to turn in a great performance for Hot Fuzz. <laughs> exactly. Then I'm going to be in Penny Dreadful, I think, yeah. is what he said. <laughs> that's maybe. right. Doctor Who. I'm in one of those seasons. Remember that? Yeah. Time Lords or something. I think I'm in the Doom Patrol <laughs> in some universes. So this actually isn't based on any novel. It is the yeah, this first is one ever. Original content, point. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But the name comes from Ian Fleming's Jamaican beach house which is named after a World War 2 thing that he did in World War 2 because Bond uh, everyone knows this I'm sure but it's like the fantasized version of what he kind of wanted to do in the war because he did a lot of war room kind of espionage stuff he That's wasn't right. out in the field shooting people mm -hmm. like a James Bond he was in a boardroom shooting people like a James Bond also right. <laughs> oh they got Pierce Brosnan anyway so That's he's, right. he's, he's Bond yeah yeah yeah, huh? yeah. and you know what Looks the part, definitely looks 100%. the part. 100%. Especially in this one. Yes. He's got great hair for 1995 or any year. Yeah. That's some good looking hair. But from what I can gather, the plot is the villains want to acquire a golden eye. Golden eye. No, I don't like the theme song, <laughs> by the way. Uh, the, the plot is the, the villains want to acquire golden eye, which is an it's golden an EMP. Eye. Are you familiar with what an EMP is? It's an well, electromagnetic after, pulse. I am after this movie. This, I think, so. was one of the earliest uh, times in the cinema I learned what an electromagnetic pulse was. And then I learned it again in every every movie that's ever been made since. We I get it now. We have a rule where your movie automatically loses a point, if that means anything, which obviously it doesn't. It's an arbitrary thing I just said. But if you explain what an EMP is, this one definitely gets a pass because it's one of the first. Yeah. Anyway, they want to steal it. Yeah. So they can then computer hack into some computers, some financial computers, and steal a bunch of money and then set off Goldeneye so there's no record of what they've done. I'd never seen satellite imagery like this in a movie as uh -huh. well. I know what they didn't really use a satellite, but just the idea that you could see someone from space, I was like, people can do, oh my God, is that true? <laughs> yes, they can definitely do that. It's the mid-90s, what have I been doing? <laughs> oh, it's the mid-90s and I'm a teenager, what have I now been up to? They saw where I kept all my pogs when I buried them in the woods. The opening of this film is terrific. Yeah, it opens with... James Bond, first a of all. A stuntman, you should say. A stuntman who looks kind of like Pierce Brosnan <laughs> leaping off the side of a dam, and that looks incredible. It's kind of, it's a real stunt. Uh, because Bungie was big at the was, time. Bungie was big Just at like the time. parkour was big at the time of Casino Royale. That's right, exactly. Just like clowns were big in the 80s when Roger Moore did that. <laughs> That's right. Big things are happening. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that sequence I certainly remembered and really enjoyed from the first time I watched it. What I enjoy is that Pierce Brosnan's first appearance as Bond mm. and his first piece of dialogue and his witty rejoinder first happens when he's upside down in a men's toilet. <laughs>
I think that's fun. I find him very convincing as Bond. In this one in particular, I think he's suave and the one-liners aren't too over the top. That's At this true, point, yeah. they mm. become worse. And I also think Yanis, Yanis, Janis, double <laughs> sixes. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's a great foil for him. Yeah. Again, looks the part. He's the kind of guy that would be running around doing missions, but also... <laughs> Is that guy evil? Exactly, and it's yeah. also, you know, at this point, Bond is yet to be rebooted, so he's been doing this, the Bond thing for for decades. Yeah, he did no. that weird golden gun thing. Exactly. <laughs> that nobody else in the 00 series has gone has gone bad at this point, yeah. so it's kind of, they've had it coming, if, sure. if, if we're honest. I can't believe, uh, if we're just getting into, this is the part of the video where, hey, remember this? They put <laughs> him in a helicopter. There's multiple points, and it's very much a Bond trope, where they just leave him alone and presume that he's going to die. Ah, uh, they explain most of the plot first, and then they leave him <laughs> to die. You're right. Again, that's James Bond, yeah. but they leave him in a helicopter. He awakens to a screaming woman, and the eject button is just next to his yeah, head. Right, uh-huh. Terrific stuff. What do you think of the Bond girls or the Bond women, as they're more known now? Uh, I have I have a few notes. Sure. Um, so obviously we have we have the villain the villain Bond girl that Xenia on top. It's a little subtler than your days of Pussy Galore, as an example. A little, just a little. <laughs> I have I have two notes about her. Kind of sweaty all the time, comma horny for murders. Do you think that's <laughs> time, that's yeah. accurate? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Here's the initial part of her plan, which you, you don't really think about it, but then literally decades later, you will do a podcast about it or and a video, <laughs> and you will you will rewatch it again and you'll think about it. Her plan initially is to seduce an admiral. Yes. Kill the admiral, yes. steal his identification, yes. and then board an aircraft carrier accompanied by an associate of hers mm-hmm. disguised as the admiral so she can steal a helicopter. Yes. But what happens is they take the ID and they go to the aircraft carrier and the guard looks at it for two seconds and he just hands it back and they just get on. <laughs> so yeah. I would say the much easier thing to do would maybe make a fake ID. Nobody's looking at anything or scanning anything. But again, she's horny for murder, so I guess. That's what she's about, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other Bond woman, <laughs> I think she's good. Isabella Skorupka. Yeah, yes. she's one of the better ones in, in this batch of films, I think, because mm-hmm. there are some... Well, there's one in particular which we'll get to, which is not great, but... I think she's good. I think she's a good match for him. Apparently, we find out in the sequel novel yes. uh, for the next movie that she ends up marrying some other dude. And he's like, good for her, because obviously I could never be happy with one person. So that's, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know this is the only, and we need to check this week to week, Pierce Brosnan movie that doesn't end with him lying on top of a woman? Not movie, Bond movie, I should <laughs> I specify. I say, right. Yeah. Because I haven't seen Mamma Mia, so <laughs> I don't know. There's some people I also want to point out who I think are great in this. Alan Cumming as Boris is terrific. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's, it's a good performance. Uh, he That character is just kind of a collection of catchphrases. You know? I tried to count the, uh, the pen clicks. Right. I couldn't. I tried to find online if somebody <laughs> counted the pen clicks. You can't. Well, that's my, if you build it, they will come. I think maybe that's, that's right. the next video. I wonder. <laughs> I have, look, I have a, I have a note here sure. because obviously James Bond is given all his gadgets by Q as usual. Oh my god! He's given a, a car filled with rockets and turbochargers and ejector seats that, of course, he never uses any of in this in this movie. Does he use the belt? He does use the belt, yes. One of the things Q gives him, obviously, is a pen. It's a grenade. Three clicks arms it, three clicks disarms it. Yes. And I've got here, I wonder how many MI6 agents were killed in 1995 <laughs> by their own exploding pens before uh, Q put a click counter on them. <laughs> he is a fantastic carryover from the previous Desmond, films. The great Desmond Llewellyn, And he yeah. still feels sharp in this one. You kind of, you see a bit of the decline. Yeah. But it's a really fun throwback scene. You see all the visual yeah. gags happening in the background. It almost doesn't fit in this kind of movie, but yeah, I right. think it 100% works. No, this, so. one, this one's really quite good, you know, at, especially at the time. It felt fresh, but it sort of felt in line with the ones from the 70s and the 80s. Yes. because I think partly because it was made on film, so mm. it still feels kind of, you know, yeah. real and not and not made on video. And also because, like, all the briefing rooms are all, then they haven't gone to, like, steel and glass and holograms. They're just, like, <laughs> yeah. wood panel and, like, <laughs> yeah. leatherette, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Which is, again... Something that I've been saying for a long time, take Bond back to the 60s. -hmm. When you reboot it, you set it in that time period of the original films and you Mm -hmm. get all the retro gadgets and the retro sets and the retro cars. I think it'd be fantastic. And also, everything's not on a smartphone then. That's true, yeah. You know, he has to carry like eight different devices <laughs> that his phone could do. Love the watch, by the way, the watch laser. Oh, yeah, Great that's, that's a classic. Yeah. Did you know Ooh. that for the video game, which we'll get to, they went around and they photographed everything that they could in this film, including Boris's shirt, to get that design oh. into the game. So as yeah. they were filming the movie? Yeah, they that's... went down just for a day and just huh. did everything that they could. Wow. There was like 10 people that worked on that game. Mm-hmm. 
Anyway, we'll get to it. My surprise, goodness. maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. A bit of surprise mm. there, yeah. I also want to make mention of Judy Dench. Who I've I think- written here, all caps, Judy Dench. Yeah, and that's really... What else do you say, really? She's a great inclusion. The funny thing is, M being a woman was the idea of Lois Maxwell, who was the original Miss Moneypenny. Because mm-hmm, yeah. she wanted to come back and be the new M. Okay, yeah. And they went, that's a great idea. For somebody else. Oh, no. Yeah. And look, I love no. Judy Dench. You can't really fault it, but that's right. Like, and look, for the next movie, we want, we want to cast a Lois Maxwell type. Lois, do you know anyone <laughs> like that? We got Samantha Bond yes. as, as uh, Money Penny this time around. Yeah. Again, in this one, she's kind of sharp and acerbic, and she's got like a rejoinder for every one of Bond's kind of, you know, lascivious come on. She hates him. Yeah, she absolutely <laughs> hates him. But then in later movies, she just becomes like super horny for Bond she in VR and stuff. She kisses him with hologram glasses yes, exactly, on. Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, there's a few things I feel like we need to talk about, and this I feel is your area more than mine. Okay. Uh, theme song you mentioned. I don't love it. It's okay. It's no yeah. From Russia With Love or even... Uh, Live and Let Die. Yeah, mm, Diamonds Are Forever. Diamonds Are Forever. That's right. It's also, I think, maybe the last opening sequence where it's just just naked women doing naked women stuff. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> they weren't, should we put some clothes on them now? Just be naked, they're gold They're naked in a women. pool, then they're out of the pool and yeah. they're naked. It's someone shooting some, a gun. Should we put some roulette stuff in front of them? Nah, just naked women, I reckon. <laughs> So the other thing I wanted to mention is the car. It wasn't out at the time. BMW, yeah, the BMW Z3. Mm. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Yeah, mm. you a fan? At the time, sure, but I, it has not aged well. I mean, yeah. what has certainly aged well is the Aston Martin DB5, which and the has hair. the opening sequence yeah. and the hair. Yeah. Mm. But I think the thing about uh, that car is as well that I read. You mentioned earlier we don't see any of the the tricks in the car. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that's because it was such a new model that they didn't have time to put it in to the movie. Oh, I see. So that's why. And also, BMW it, yeah. are probably like, don't show the Stinger missiles <laughs> in the car because everybody will want Stinger missiles. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is it's the 90s. You're a man of clothes. Oh, How we do it here. Look, Daniel Craig could not pull off like a cable knit sweater and an ascot. <laughs> he absolutely killed it. Could, Daniel Craig could not pull off a double-breasted blazer with golden buttons. I contemplated wearing one today to the recording. Real, for no reason. For no for, reason. For nobody to see. For nobody <laughs> to see. Could Daniel Craig pull off just a just a tactical fishing gear <laughs> for the finale? Just in that 1990s sweet spot. Yeah. Everything's slightly too big. Yeah. Also, just want to quickly mention about the finale. That bit where he's dropped on to the satellite dish. I don't know if you notice, but that dude breaks his leg so fucking hard. The stuntman it, does. Uh, no, the body. The, the, oh, yeah, right, right, right. Uh-huh. You know, I wound it back and went, did that guy just break his leg in eight places? It is brutal. Ben <laughs> will put in a slow-mo. Thanks, Ben. But again, for the amount of distance he dropped, yeah. that he's getting off quite lightly. Yes. The fact that the character, the character of 006 is still supposed to be alive, yeah. having dropped like 300 feet. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you have to, he has to stay alive so the satellite dish can fall course, on him. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm proud of him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do want to talk about some alternate casting for this because there were some other choices other than Brosnan. I'm ready. Before we do that, we got to get into the video game, right? That's t- yes, let's play a video game. Specifically, you can play the video game and I can comment over the top of it. <laughs> Terrific. Because I do not want to play that video game. <laughs> Now, we can hardly talk about GoldenEye the movie without going past GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64, Mason. I mean, physically we could. Is it your favourite game? No. Do you hate this game? Oh, look, you might assume that I hate this game because of all the times I've said that I hate this game, but <laughs> I, I, I don't hate it. I just, I wasn't... I never played it in a scenario where I enjoyed it. Yes. Because I always because I played it when it came out, which was like 1990 whatever. Yeah. And it was always on. It wasn't on one of these big old uh, uh, plasma televisions we have oh, these days. Oh, certainly not. It was on. It was always on like a, somebody's little boxy home television, <laughs> and it was split up into four t- further tiny little screens. And, you're and it a- turned out I needed glasses for you know probably a couple of decades, and I didn't know. And they'd come from their own house where they Should all just go ahead watch. Oh, nice. Love it. They yeah. all owned an N- N64. Yep. And, and it's a horrible control by any standard. Oh my god, I hated it. It's too yeah. many. It's too it's many too of everything. Many, yeah. So what we're doing here, I'm actually running through uh, the facility level, which is my favourite level. And one of the classics from GoldenEye, it's running on an emulator is why it doesn't look like four pixels clashing into each other. Oh, this is actually improved performance. This is improved performance. So I... you can murder a man in a toilet in high <laughs> definition. Exactly. Perfect. Just like the movie. It did a pretty good job of replicating the movie, but I think what people remember this most for is is the multiplayer. The multiplayer, absolutely. But yeah. I just think the single player element of this game is really stand out. I mean, it's buggy and it's dated. Sure. But there's a <laughs> lot of things in this game that kind of set trends. Watch this. 
Okay. Boom, oh, boom, object, boom. Damaging object. Ah, okay. like me. You're I'm being shot. damaged. Yeah. I appreciate that James Bond has come into this loaded for bear. He's brought in like 90 bullets. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you recall in the movie, he's, he's running around. You can hear all the bullets jangling. He has to load them all one at a time. He's got a sack of bullets like an evil gun-toting Santa Claus. That's exactly it. The thing about this game is also, you know, the multiplayer was added like six weeks before the game came out. They went, can we do multiplayer? And they all made right. it without rare knowing. Huh. And the then, publisher. Yeah, uh -huh. and then like threw it in. Then the last minute they went, oh yeah, we made this multiplayer. They went, oh yeah, we'll just leave that in, I guess. Huh. And it turned out to be like a massive selling point. It's, of the I game. mean, yeah, but people people love this multiplayer. People, yeah. people. Except multiply. for Odd Job, don't be bloody Odd Job. He's you know too what short. I mean? He's too short. He's but up to tricks. But but I mean, surely you should be. Everybody should be. Odd. No, well, not everybody can be Odd Job. Just like in real life. That's Only true. One person. But could surely be odd job. one person. You get in first. You play as odd job. Isn't yeah. he so short that all the all your bullets and stuff go over his head? Yeah, exactly. And nobody knows where the duck button is. A lot of people also. Yeah, the duck button is like a combination of buttons. Ah. Oh. Yeah. But what I've actually done, I've mapped this to an actual like a proper controller. Ah, so that I can explains it. Do okay, this properly, right. Which is why I'm not stumbling everywhere. I mean, I still am because it's still yep. like mm. 64 controllers on a you know on a Dual Shock. Uh huh. But so you haven't you haven't mashed it up to two NES controllers. <laughs> no. You got one in each hand. No, I've taped them back to front. Oh, I'll do it that way. Uh -huh. yeah. No, I guess this game was this. This seems also one of the earliest games where you can aim in a di different direction. You're moving, yes, in, right. That's exactly or right. Or at least you can very you can aim up and down as opposed yeah. to like a Doom at the time where it was just yeah. You just fired straight ahead and yeah, hoped you were in right. line of sight. And other games have done this spe specifically on PC, uh -huh. but nobody had done it prop. Like there had been console, obviously games before which. You know, because Doom got ported to the Super console Nintendo. games before. No, right? I'm sorry, I mean console first-person shooters. Yes, that's you know, true. No, because Doom had been ported and a bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. But this was the first time people went, oh, actually, you can actually have a good first-person shooter. I'm looking for Dr. Doke, by the way. Dr. Doke. Yeah, who's one of the game developers. So I don't know if you know this about this game, but all the people uh, associated with the game had their faces pasted onto all these different characters. Oh. And they used things like like the UPS guy would get in and just go, yep, we need three photos of you. We need a photo <laughs> of the side of your head and the front of your head. And, and the UPS the guy was like, am I under arrest? What's happening? So oh, Dr. Doke's always in a different place. By oh that's it. my God. The other thing I love about this, uh, look at that face. Beautiful. Are you going to kill any of these men? Well, that's the thing. You, you can... Um, oh, you I'm in the back. Well, where you shoot them is where they watch, where they kind of react. That was a big deal at the time. So if you shoot them in the hand, they're like, my hand, my hand. And this guy might pull a gun if, if I'm lucky. Oh, oh. too slow. And now I get his gun. Wow. Now, sure, he was an evil Soviet scientist. <laughs> but at the same time, he probably had a wife and kids. Yeah, not anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, they still exist, but he, he doesn't get to see them anymore. <laughs> it's true, yeah. yeah. But it's one of those things where... If you pull out a gun, yes. like a loud gun, it's uh -huh. over. There's like a million guys will come. Not right, a million, but right. it's... Yeah. So they're kind of smart, these guys. Yeah, a little bit. So they'll see me and... and oh, oh, very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> also... Yeah. Oi. Um, Oi. Soundproof. Oh, no. I was going to say it's soundproof. Uh-oh. Nice. Okay. Pulling out the big guns, Mason. Oh, yes. Not By yet. that, you mean a regular gun? A regular gun. I just need to... I oh, hit that guy in that spot that takes ages to die. Oh, you know what? Here's the thing. Here's, here's what was happening, James. Just FYI. Sure. I saw you were running low on bullets with your silence swath of PPK, and I was kind of hoping that was all you had, <laughs> and you were running out of bullets and not noticing, and I was going to be like, what are you going to do now, idiot? But you have we'll a do big, what you can do. You have a bigger, better gun. I've got a bigger, better... Ah, karate chops. They put in the judo chop because it was easier than making a fist. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah. sure. Yeah, but you know, Chop is very James Bond. He does one. He, he does one in Golden so the movie Golden Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I've also noticed that you're getting some uh, bullet holes in the walls. That's fantastic. It's so much destructible environment. If you shoot enough, the, the previous ones will, will disappear. disappear. Right, right. Just but, like real uh, walls. I'd never seen that at the time. There's a few yeah. things that I just never realized was a thing you could do. Mm. Uh, the precision Falls aiming. Of communism. That's right. Yeah. The precision aiming is like it's pretty solid. You can't move, but it's like a nice little addition. It's also got a very generous auto aim. I so, see. Yeah, which is very handy. Well, I mean, me. you could have fooled me based on the handful of times <laughs> I played this game. Well, imagine how bad you'd be if it didn't oh have that. Oh my god! I know where every guy is. And in I've this signed mission. us up to that Golden Eye tournament tomorrow. <laughs> oh no! Nah, you'll be right. Do you remember Golden Eye tournaments? We used to do them all the time. Well, you know, it wasn't actually supposed to be a first-person shooter. Originally, it was a 2D platformer that Rare was going to do on the Super Nintendo. Well, it failed spectacularly. Then, <laughs> <didn't they? laughs> no, it's not even close. But that was uh, off the back you of... You idiot, you added an extra dimension to this. You're fired. <laughs> Wait that, a minute. That was off the back of uh, Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, okay. so... But oh, because that's also a rare joint. Yeah, that's right. Huh. But because, of course, new stuff. New yes, console. new stuff, sure. Now, is that for, where is this guy? Is that Dr. Donk? <laughs> Doke. Oh. It's actually named after one of the people that worked on it. Let's see. Doke... Oh. 
Doak? One of these, oh, this oh is there's Doak. so many Dokes. There he is. Oh. Hello, Dr. Doak. Originally, the new title of No Time to Die was going to be you. Time to Go, Dr. Doak. <laughs> Look, it's important that he didn't the live. The bottling room? Is this a winery? Well, it's where we meet uh, Alec Trevelyan. Oh, the vineyard. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Secret guy. Can he see me? Can I James Bond him with my hands? Judo chop. Judo chop. Give me the judo chop. So I can use the door decoder or I can just use a gun. What, do you, what would you prefer? It's entirely uh, up to you, obviously. Uh, the biggest gun you have. This is it. Oh. The other thing is this has amazing cheats, which I haven't unlocked, but there's so much good stuff. Is there a big head mode? Oh, absolutely there is. The idea was that they'd release the cheats in magazines initially, right? I've heard of magazines. Uh, but then one gun of the, magazines? One, that's right, one of the people at uh, uh, Nintendo said... It would be great if they were unlockable. If you do, you know, missions with certain, you know, uh-huh. you do certain objectives on certain, you know, certain difficulties, then you unlock the codes and that's how they ended up doing it. Oh. Which I think is much better. I think that's how it should be now. Now it's like DLC and you get a new hat. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can you unlock, uh, can you unlock James Bond's Japanese disguise from that movie <laughs> in which <laughs> well, he is a horrible racist? You should say that because the multiplayer initially had, I'm yes. padding for time here because I'm near the end. Maybe I'll put some <laughs> other footage in. Right. But, uh, Initially had the four James Bonds in multiplayer, but they couldn't get Connery's rights. Oh, okay, so they right. took them all out. It's still in the code. You can still find snippets of it in there. Yeah, right. Yeah. But anyway, so, so this So now it's Brosnan or Bust. That's right. <laughs> they should have been... You know what? They should have done like... Um, they should have done David Niven. They should have replaced Sean Connery with David Niven, James Bond. That's right. Oh, watch this. I'm going to kill an unkillable guy here. Oh, yeah, nice. I remember this trick. Were they so landmines? Supposed to blo- oh. Well, this is like in the movie. Remember how he yeah, plants yeah, it? And yeah, then he yeah. goes, buy me a pant. He says, uh, uh, buy, buy, me, buy me pant. <laughs> Your favourite line, obviously. I remember also when I first heard of this game, a friend of mine was like, it looks just like the characters in the act. The, the actors are, look at that face. Look at that <laughs> oh pixelated my God, JPEG. Yep. <laughs> at least his nose is jutting out and not flat to his head, I he guess. He looks like his character in Game of Thrones if they decided, <laughs> rather than make him a human, they'd make him a goblin. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So I'm going to blow up these, uh, all this st- this stuff without blowing oh, while he holds off the up. While he holds off the guards, yeah. good stuff. See, they've got him, like in the movie, they've got him. See, they've mm-hmm. got him, but watch this. Oh, no, not Alec Trevelyan. Don't do it. Just kidding. Boom. <laughs> gotcha. I'm out of here. Don't pose. Run. There's yeah, so many guys behind you. You can be shot in the back so many times. Yeah. So, yeah, this was going to be like a virtual cop kind of game, and they showed it off, and people who saw it were like, oh, my God, a first-person shooter. And they went, yes, a first-person shooter. Where you have control of your motions. (laughs) That's right. And not the camera moving around. Incredible. So, basically, yeah, I think this game's terrific. Mm. Like, I I hadn't been back to it in a long time. If you can get the controls to something that you like working with, like a keyboard and mouse, mm-hmm. it's much better. Yeah, if you want to mm. you want to upload it to the Virtual Boy, oh my play God. it and get intense migraines, well, do you, it like that. <laughs> it actually nearly did come to the Virtual Boy. Oh, of course it did. Yeah, but of course, like most things on the Virtual Boy, it was it was cancelled. The funny thing because was... Because playtesting resulted in intense vomiting. <laughs> exactly. The funny thing was, though, they lost the license after this because it became too expensive. Of course, and for the next, because of success. That's right. So for the next one's a third-person shooter that went to the PlayStation and apparently not good. But I tell you what, Mason, if this video gets 100 million likes... Oh, yes. Now, what's a reasonable number? Last 100 time we said 20, billion <laughs> likes. Last week we said 20,000. Yeah, let's say 50 because that happened really quickly. Okay. And that way also, I don't really want to play it. So, <laughs> oh, we have to. Oh, I see. If we get <laughs> if we get fifty thousand likes on this, we have to play the next. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow never dies. The that's game right. is tomorrow that it. Tomorrow never dies. That's oh, right. Dear. So that sound good to you? No. Yeah. So <laughs> so get to liking, folks. Get to liking, folks. But yeah, I also love to know if people think this holds up because I genuinely think it does. It set a lot of trends. It's responsible for like Halo and a bunch of other first person shooters on consoles. Mm. I mean, sure, but can you put your hand in a toilet and, and pull some poo out? Do you think you can forever style? <laughs> Maybe in one of the later uh, missions. Mm. But yeah. Well, we missed that opening. We didn't try it in that opening sequence in the toilet, so I guess we'll never know. Oh my goodness. I think as far as early video game movie adaptations, it manages to hit pretty close to what it's supposed to be. It's not just a side scroller and you're the Terminator or whatever they used to do. That's you true, know, you yeah. You go on the missions, you meet the people. There are additions to it. But I think it does a pretty good job of replicating the movie. Absolutely. That's what I think. Anyways, I said that uh, we talk about alternate casting. Please. And here it is. In consideration, a lot of these are rumoured, obviously. Uh, Rafe Fiennes. Oh, is Mr. James Bond. That's right. Ended up in the new franchise. Mel Gibson. Okay, well, have, again, it was the 90s. So it was the 90s. He was in, in, in contention for every major role at the time. That's it. It said that Sam Neill auditioned, but he actually auditioned in the 80s. 
and he realized at the time he's like, I'm not going to get this and I feel dumb. There's footage of that. It actually doesn't look too bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, Liam Neeson turned it down. He would have been a big lumbering. <laughs> well, he, he, <laughs> he's gotten his in the, in the, you know, in the modern era, hasn't That's he? That's very you know? true. And yeah. Paul McGann uh, was going to... Oh, the, uh, the Eighth Doctor? The Eighth Doctor. He was going to do it if Brosnan didn't do it. So, yeah, like you said... Didn't end up that way, and he was Doctor Who for a minute, and then he did it for another minute. He's had to like fifteen years later. Look, in the future, everybody will have two minutes of being the Doctor, so that's I, very exciting, isn't it? I cannot wait. Look, I, I just, I just made some notes for this one because I'm a big fan of the Bond franchise sure. generally. Just enjoy these. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> sit back, everyone. Sit back, everyone. This is Meso's stray thoughts at the end. Is what Love it is. It. An early, an early scene with James Bond is he gets, he's getting evaluated by an MI6 psychologist, uh, and and later he gives her quote, a very thorough evaluation. A root. A root, exactly. But I would just enjoy it if later M reads back that report to Bond and it just says bad at sex. I thought that would be funny. Uh, uh, I've got a note here. It says in 1995, an incoming email was a full screen event. Because there's a moment where Boris gets an email and he's like, whoa. It's like, wah, wah. I've gotten like six emails while we were recording this and all of them are just ads for stuff. And I'm like, nah. I've gotten here. After Bond and Honor Top have a fight in the sauna, they sure. then sort of a knockdown drag out fight, Bond would have had to hold a gun on her long enough for both of them to get completely dressed and get in a car. Yeah, how the hell would that worked? I don't know. What do you put on? At a, a certain point, he'd be after like, I've got to tie this tie. Can you hold the gun for a minute? <laughs> Just hold it on yourself. It's fine. And look, my final note is: I wonder where the liquid nitrogen frozen Alan Cumming statue is being, currently being stored. Because mm. at the end, he gets frozen, and then he's just. Uh, I bet Alan uh, Cumming has it. You reckon he has it? <laughs> Definitely. Right, let's, we'll tweet him. We'll find out. Bond is known for stealing things from other things. Yes. And I feel like they saw Demolition Man and went, "What if that?" But Alan Cumming. <laughs> Yes. You know what I mean? The yeah. dream. I bet, he, I bet Alan Cumming does have it in his house, the horny devil. <laughs> I love that guy. We are back by popular demand. Uh, we're back for Tomorrow Never Dies because we are the second movie into the Pierce Brosnan Bond run. Mm. If you could leave a like, it's great. If you can't leave a like, we don't care. We don't need you. No, we do. Okay, edit that out then. <laughs> uh, originally, this was actually called Tomorrow Never Lies. Oh, yeah. Okay. Script typo. Uh, so they went, oh, actually, that sounds a little bit better. Tomorrow Never Lies makes more sense. Because it's about <laughs> the manipulation of the media. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Tomorrow Never Dies doesn't make any sense. No. It should be called Tomorrow Will Definitely Die If Carver, the media magnate, Succeeds in his conspiracy to cause the British and the, the Chinese to start a war together. That's yes. his plan, unless Bond stops him. Never dies? Never dies. <laughs> I thought I hated this. Oh, yes. I went for decades thinking that this was a movie that I didn't like. Decade? And yeah. Right. They hurried this into production. Uh -huh. Anthony Hopkins was cast as Elliot Carver, but he walked away three days in because it was really chaotic. There wasn't a completed shooting script because they had to finish the movie two years after Goldeneye uh -huh. to kind of get another one going. Uh, he actually went on to do Mask of Zorro, which was what Martin Campbell was doing at yeah, the time because right. he, he didn't want to do another one. Director of Goldeneye, yeah. That's it. And Pierce Brosnan also said this movie was like pulling teeth. Yes. So I think it's because I was so poisoned by Die Another Day. Yeah. And I just presumed that everything in between was mostly that. But this is definitely more Goldeneye than Die Another Day. This movie is okay, but you, I feel you can feel it coming apart at the seams a oh, little yeah. bit. The downhill slide from Goldeneye is starting. Well, I, I have a note here. It says, uh, James Bond, who are you talking to with your little quips? This one especially. Us. Tell the audience from the other side of the fourth wall. Yeah. Quite early on, there's the this plane stunt. Sure. First of all, he gets into this plane. Yep. And he doesn't kill the co-pilot. No. He whacks him over the head with a helmet and he just leaves in there. What do you think is going to happen, Bond? You think you're going to fly <laughs> all the way to Britain and this guy's not going to wake up? Of course he's going to wake up trying to kill you with a belt or whatever. <laughs> Secondly, the chase happens and he ejects the guy into the other plane and it all blows up and he goes... Huh. Backseat driver. Who are you talking Doesn't to? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. You don't yeah. drive a plane. No, you fly a plane. You should have said backseat flyer and then turned to a second camera and gone, <laughs> like backseat driver, but different. I feel like if I'd have seen that clip alone yes. just up on YouTube, uh -huh. I would have thought that somebody spliced in a scene from Hot Shots with that <laughs> yeah, right. guy going through the bottom of a plane. Yep. And then all of a sudden there's like chicken feathers everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Also, the plane stunt right at the start of the movie, it's just Goldeneye again. It's just the yeah, opening scene. Not, but not as good. Not as good, but yeah. just more. And I think maybe yeah. that was the, the screenwriting direction. It was like, people like the golden eye scene. They like the plane. Where you think he's going mm. to think he's gonna die and then he escapes in the plane. Just do the thing again where you think he's going to die and, and then he escapes in a plane yeah. kind of thing. That's all yeah. I wanted to see. Also in that sequence, Bond is aware 
that there is a cruise missile that is approaching a number of nuclear bombs that could cause untold havoc in the world. And he stops and he wastes precious time lighting some terrorist cigarette <laughs> before he does anything. It's for us. It is for me. <laughs> He's like, well, I could just crack this guy in the head with the butt of my rifle. Yeah. Or I could wait for him, light his cigarette. Maybe the wind will put it out. I'll have to do it again. <laughs> He's got, he gets a good look at me. Yeah, that's right. He Maybe he pulls his gun, whatever. <laughs> then you crack him with the butt of the gun so you can say, oh, smoking is a filthy habit, isn't it? You yeah. could have died. Everyone could have died, <laughs> Bond. Who are you talking to? The audience, we know. <laughs> So I remember we laughed and laughed, Mason, yes. years ago about this. We don't do that anymore, do we? <laughs> no, we, we haven't laughed since about this idea of a person manipulating the media and taking over the world with the newspapers. Mm, that's right. This is basically Rupert Murdoch. It really is now, yeah. He's sort of the amalgamation of like he's a Steve Jobs and he's a, and he's a Murdoch and he's a Kerry Packer or whoever yeah. else was alive then. But yeah, this isn't that far-fetched at this point, no, really. This was originally supposed to tie into the Hong Kong handover. Oh, yeah, they, uh, got, 99. Was, that's yeah. right, it was given back to the Chinese. But they thought this is going to date the movie. Also, if something goes wrong during that event, that's not going to look good for this movie that we're putting out. That's so true. let's just avoid that at all costs. I feel like, though, this movie has aged better than I thought. I agree, yeah. Except for the kicking and punching sound effects, which are <laughs> mostly horrendous. <laughs> yeah, They're not correctly gauged. There's a moment in there, Bond is brought into a room by some bouncers, some That's thugs exactly or whatever. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah. there's one where... The little kick? There's a little kick, yeah. yeah. It's the noise that would make if somebody's skull gets completely caved in. Like, there's no coming back from it. It's like a wet, whack crunch. Why is he letting them beat him? up for that long here's the the downfall of this one is that this bond is in the mode of introduce yourself with your real name yep. give the game away completely in a way that get you into a lot of trouble and then get brought into a room and get beaten up like he, within five minutes he goes up to Elliot Carver and he's like yeah I, ba I banged your wife and also I know you've redirected all those ships and stuff I'm a banker and the guy's like what what sort of banking I know you did crimes banking That's <laughs> Straight, like straight just, away. You may as well just say you're a spy at that yeah. point because they're going to come after you regardless. Yeah. I did like how later when he escaped, they looked into him and they went, oh, look, he's got a he's got a crystal clean record. Yeah. Then he's a spy because people don't have those kind of records. I thought that was interesting where they didn't exactly figure it out straight away. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that's uh -huh. how he, you know, that's how he worked out that his wife was lying. First of all, interesting thing about the Bond women, neither of them are evil. That's true. And Which means at least one's going to die. Exactly. And of course, it's Terry Hatcher. She was pregnant during the filming of this. Ah. Uh, I thought she did a reasonably good job with a very minimal role. Yes. She has got flack for being in this, and people have talked about her as one of the worst Bond women. I don't think so. I think she does a decent job with this role, which was just turn up and slap James Bond and then a bit of banter, and then yeah. you, you get shot or whatever. And also... Poisoned. Why you wouldn't turn it down? I feel like no, definitely yeah. not. That being said, I really liked Michelle Yeoh in this. Mm. Uh, she did a lot of her own stunts. She couldn't do all of them because of insurance reasons. But yep. the things like the escape that she makes when James Bond is getting shot at, and she's just walking down the wall, and he's yeah. like, Phew. "Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. That's good." If if any character from the Bros and Bonds should have gotten their own spin off, it would have been uh, Wei Ling. Well, funny you should mention that because there is that talk of you know Jinx was going to get her own spin off, but yes. there was mention or at least there was in the IMDb trivia and Wikipedias and such, that she was going to get a spin-off. Mm. And I think she definitely could have carried a franchise. Agreed. And still could. I love the dumb torture guy. Incredible. Wait, which guy are we talking about? I'm talking about the, uh, the guy in the hotel room. He's from Ghost. He looks like a sad cartoon dog. Yeah, uh, that is the the late great Vincent Chiavelli. Yeah, he's been he's a, he's a sort of a terrific iconic character actor. I love that he he's so in control of the situation. He's done it a million times. Yes, and to him, it's he's just going to work and he's having the banter and he's having a bit of fun with it. Then when he gets the tables turned on him, yeah. he's just he goes to water. Yes. And then you see that side of Bond, which is always there, but it's behind this sheen of kind of civility. Uh -huh. And he just goes, too bad, shoots him in the face. Yeah, I just good. think that's amazing, just yeah, getting yeah. those glimpses of Bond yeah. where this guy is an actual psychopath. Yeah. And again, he's only in one scene, but he's very memorable. And he's, you yeah. know, he's got this, these moments of like, this is embarrassing. How unprofessional are these guys? They can't get into a car. <laughs> I'm, I have to talk to you. I'm sorry. That being said, the other henchman, Stamper, yeah. no good. Nah, I feel. Like Just, him. No. He looks like he belongs in a German boy band. Yeah, he looks like stupid some, hair. Yeah, exactly. He looks like somebody that Popeye would beat up on the way to beat up. Pluto. Pluto. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
I want to ask you about this. Okay. I love a Bond clothing report. Oh, I'm ready. And okay. look, we could get into the specifics all day, every okay. day. So what do you think of the look of Commander Bond? Oh, Very yes. rarely we get him we do, in, his, in his naval outfit. Yes. I love it. Where are you at with I it? I think it's very snappy. Yeah. I think it's a nice, you know, it's a nice change. You know, all these little gold buttons in his hat. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's great. rare to see a hatted Bond. It was very common, I feel, in the Roger Moore days, but yes. less so. Because he has that background, but no. I think this might be the last time we've had that in these movies. I think so, yeah. Yeah, Daniel Craig certainly hasn't done it. No. His background was drowning men in sinks. <laughs> that's true. I yeah. don't think he was in the Navy. I think that's just what he did. That was his job full time. <laughs> he just hung around on a Navy destroyer. <laughs> like he just scuttled around in it at night and he just strangled sailors. <laughs> so he's like an urban man. <laughs> yeah. But they eventually made him an honorary commander. They're like, if you leave, we'll give you some medals. And he's like, okay. <laughs> uh, Jerry Butler appearance. I don't know if you noticed. I did not notice that. Yeah. Uh, so apparently he turned down Casino Road Royale for fear of typecasting. That was on IMDb. Oh, I, see. I don't know whether I, I believe don't know if that's that. true. I also want to say that I love that car. I mean, the car's fine, the BMW 750, whatever it is. Yeah, it's not a... What's interesting about this is that it's got a pretty solid car chase with very unmemorable cars. Just like, just, <laughs> just standard... Just a grey BMW. Just standard <laughs> issue, like, European sedans. Yeah. So it's got a GPS tracking system, which oh at the time... Oh, my God, this movie... mind it, Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, the GPS must have been in the news. We got an explanation early on about what a <laughs> GPS is. Yep. The whole drama is around GPS. The British ship goes into Chinese territorial waters. Sure. And then it gets blown up. The commanders are like, there's no way this could have gone out of sync because it's the GPS system. <laughs> These days you'd be like, hey, Steve, can you switch it off and on again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's out of sync. Okay, cool. We'll leave. We'll leave. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, because that happens with technology. A lot of the yeah, time it exactly. just doesn't work. Almost constantly. Sorry, you were saying about the car chase. Well, I like the idea that he's got the little trackpad. Yeah. I like the phone. I want to get to the phone. Uh -huh. But I think that's a really cool invention for the time. Yes. I think you see that now and you're like, who cares? Because of drones and whatever. For sure, yeah. I also think the cutting tool on the front of the car is way too specific. Oh, it's and so it, specific. And at the exact height of that but cable. But that, that's a James Bond gadget. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm going to put all this repelling line in your belt buckle. Yeah. And he's like, oh no, there's 75 feet to the ground. <laughs> Here we go. Also, I, in, I enjoy the car chase and it's fun. And I enjoy the fact there's a lot of like reaction shots of Bond just in the back seat, just having, Go, a, just having a grand time just, <laughs> just playing on this thing. But also, when you think about it, the entire action sequence hinges on Bond not being able to open the front window of the car. Because <laughs> right. he can open the rear window and leap into the back, but if he could leap into the front, probably Would save have been a lot a problem. of time. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. I love also the idea that it's mostly bulletproof and they're hitting it with slow jammers. It's not a great looking car, mm -hmm. but what they've done with it, I really yes, like. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I also like the phone. Yeah. It's not like a modern smartphone where it's just got a scanner for everything. You know, it hacks every door. It's got like a very specific thumb scanner and a little key element to it yep. and it's a taser I just think that's a great little gadget I agree. which is also implemented in the video game look I just want to talk budget and product placement but we'll talk about that after we play the amazing game anyway, let's do it Black Ops Entertainment this is this is hot stuff <laughs> I mean Bond technically isn't Black Ops though is he he's part of MI6 was he's he ever part of, of Black Ops I don't think so I, I think I think Bond was a thing before Black Ops were a thing okay you know if anything, he'd be more beige ops. That's probably true. What's the most British colour? <laughs> so the reason they got this, and we talked briefly about this when we talked about GoldenEye, is because after GoldenEye, the Bond property was hot, hot, hot stuff. Hot, hot stuff. And so there was this bidding war, and Rare lost it. So Black Ops got it, who you might know <laughs> from games like that Jurassic Park game where it's a one-on-one -on -one fighter and your dinosaurs... I don't remember that one. I don't. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, look at his face. Not bad, though. I mean... I think I've just been, I've been conditioned. You have been conditioned. I mean, for a picture of a man that's been pasted onto a big cardboard <laughs> tube, yeah, it doesn't look bad. Yeah. It looks slightly better than the GoldenEye one. So one of the last games they did was like an X-Files game in like 2004. Oh, right. Yeah, and then they kind of... Now ah, I've been bonded. <laughs> I'm okay though. Oh, got, you come back to life just like Pac-Man. Just like Pac-Man. Like Pac cool. And James Bond. Yeah, yeah. You ever yeah. seen James Bond die? No. That's what I'm talking about. Now this is meant to be the first level. Yes. The so, first level is meant to be an adaptation right. of the movie where he's he's trying to recover some torpedoes off a fighter yes. jet, right? And this is just before. Oh, this the is how we got jet. there. Yeah, this, this is how we got, got there. He's just yeah. running around in the in the in the wintry forest for a little bit, That's gathering right. gathering pelts for the winter. And the funny thing is, as well, yes, that this game this was better a, be funny. Well, there was a. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Desmond Llewellyn. Oh, cute. In, in one of his final performances, well, the mm. final few, he did the ad for this game before it came out in 1998, and he's playing the he's playing it or <laughs> pretending to play it, and he's like, no, no, he's playing it. He was hardcore. <laughs> yeah. 
he got 500 hours of call in Call of Duty before before he passed. Did you know that? I didn't know in that. In a row. That's yeah. what killed him. He should have probably spent more time with his family. But they know, were yeah. all there cheering him on, handing him Mountain <laughs> Juice. Don't worry about it. Hello there. Yeah, so it's this ad that came out a year before and he says, this game is going to be set after the events ah, of the movie. Right. And then they kind of did some focus group testing and people were like, but we want to play as the, 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 the movie. We don't want yeah, to play, right. you know. So they ended up just replicating the movie for the most part, as good <laughs> as you can. Anyway, it's bad. It's not very oh, good. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. I kind of wish that... It's okay. I kind of wish Desmond Llewellyn had come out and he'd been like, uh, in this game, you're going to play as Q <laughs> during the, the movie Tomorrow Never Dies. So it's just him slowly like walking to the Avis rent-a-car place where he gives Bond the car. <laughs> he comes out with quips and you have to like pick what level of sighing you do to all his jokes. <laughs> Oh, do shut up, oh, 007. Like, you're just one of the worst blokes, 007. <laughs> Bring yeah. my car back for once. They <laughs> take it out of my pay. You know, I wanted to mention this, actually. Yes. With Q, yes. do you think he's ever snapped and Bonds comes back and he's like, well, you know, Q, I'm sorry, I wrecked your car. And he's like, again with this shit? Are you fucking kidding me? Every time, I w can you not, just for once, yeah. roll my car into a ditch and explode it? <laughs> you son of a bitch, you don't respect my craft. And Bonds like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, <laughs> I thought we were just man, doing banter. I'm so, sorry, I'm so really sorry, man. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe. I hope so. I don't so. know. I just feel like he doesn't respect the craft. He really doesn't. Honesty. But yeah. here's the thing, though. He doesn't respect anything or he's anyone. But they, besides the scenario we just made up, yeah. he's never suffered any consequences for just wrecking everything. Yeah, that's true. Like, every single time. They don't Q, take it out of his measly pay no, paycheck. No, Q sends him out with, like, a brand new BMW Watch or whatever it is. Watch this explosion. Ready? I'm ready. Not seen one yet. Oh, oh, look at those polygons fly off into the. Into got a bit the real then for you, didn't it? It got very real. <laughs> but like, but he, you know, Q sends him out with his brand new car every time. Yeah, sure. And then every time he brings it back is just like a burning chassis. <laughs> that, he, or if he brings yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, usually, oftentimes he just dumps it into a river. <laughs> like he just he pushes a button and the skis come out of the side and he rocket boosts it into a river or whatever. But it's like Q, if you don't want him to do that, don't build it in. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I mean? Put a speed limiter in that makes it. You can't go any faster than forty miles. An hour, you know? Yeah, give it a GPS that yells at him. <laughs> exactly. And make it a woman, because, you know, that's what he responds that's, that's to. That's the only thing he responds to. Yeah. I mean, you know what this game does, right? There's, like, an arsenal of weapons. Uh -huh, You've yeah, got yeah. your little gadgety gadgets and whatever, all of those <laughs> things. It's just... It just doesn't really all fit together. And they clearly went... We're not going to ape the Nintendo 64 game. We're going to do our own thing. Yeah, right, right. We're going right. to bring Bond into the third person. This is also the first EA game that they did. They had the license for a while. Oh, I see. So, but it just, it, it was in those days of third person games that they hadn't worked it out yet. Oh, no. Yeah. But if you go to, and we've done a video on it, Everything or Nothing. Yes. A much I remember that one, game. yeah. And also the same company, EA. Though not Black Ops, because they the were obviously developer, working yeah. on the, the X-Files game yes. for obvious reasons. All right, so I need to call in an airstrike. You ready for oh, this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, cool. What would you think of that? That oh, was not bad. Yeah, that's it's not... Very, the, very, very quick and timely. I enjoyed not, that. Yeah, I know. You don't want to be that's sitting That's that British punctuality that. oh, my goodness. you're famous for. Okay, are you ready Are you ready for the ski escape? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, I'm strapping the skis to your, to your feet as All we right. speak. Here One we go. One of the worst sections Oh, you know what? I like that lens flare, though. That's fun. Yeah? That's good. I find, kind of find it... I find it kind of irritating. Well, oh, no! Villains! Oh. Villains afoot! Get away from... Get away! Get out get of out it! Get out of it! Get out! Oh! <laughs> Get out of it. Good recovery, get, Bond. Get out. Oh. This doesn't happen in Tomorrow Never Dies. This is before Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh, yeah, this it is This is too. the prequel. Right. I'm going to yeah, have to yeah. speed it up a bit if I'm going to get away from these Muppets. Yeah. So there are driving missions on this game. They try to mix it up a bit. Yeah, right. Also, in the uh, in the trailer for this yes. and some of the screenshots before it came out, there's a scuba level oh. which never made the cut. Oh, well, I mean, that is for the best. I, I absolutely I don't, believe that to you know, be true. I don't know. You don't what, know much. I don't know much. But do you I know do, Big Jumps? I know I'm aware of Big Jumps. Good. I didn't believe in him until just, just there. Now I do. But I, I know one thing that's the water level of any video game is yes. always the worst it's always level. always death. So, yeah. So you don't want that. Do you think at the end of this you're going to be attacked by the ski free monster? The abominable <laughs> snowman? There's no way to get past this. That's how they, they banked on. They didn't finish the game. Wow, you died. Splayed. You absolutely died ski free style then. Check this out. What? Oh, yeah. Now that's. That's one thing that Brosnan and Bond never did. Be British enough? Be British enough. Opened up a, a, a big Union Jack parachute and then just, just ate a tin of baked beans <laughs> on the way down. So this is the movie This is now. the movie. Okay, great. Yeah, and great. you're going to... There's a fighter jet. There's a shootout. Look at this already. 
That's looking pretty accurate to the movie. <laughs> what I love about this, the, the Union Jack uh, parachute is, yes. he's a spy, like yes. he's a covert operative. Yes. And then they're like, who is this guy? Oh, he's British. You know, it's one of those things that yeah, you're yeah. giving away, aren't you? Like you, like, you think you put something else on there, that you put like a Russian okay, flag. Okay, but here's and- the thing. Think about this though. Pierce yeah. Brosnan, Welsh. No, he's, uh, he's Irish. Okay. <laughs> well, he's fooled even me. <laughs> he's crafty, you got yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the, the voice actor for this does a fairly decent Pierce Brosnan. He does a great buy me a pint. Of course he does. Which I know you'd appreciate. <laughs> oh, buy me a pint. Oh, you're ta- you taking photos. Yeah, that's right. Probably on your Sony Ericsson. Yeah. yeah. And if you love gadgets, Mason. I do love gadgets. Are you going to bring out a gadget? Sort of. Okay. It's supposed to stick on there because, and I had to look this up. Is this what you're supposed to be blowing yes, up? Yes, because there's something behind here. Oh. How would anybody know this? Oh, that's a secret. There is, no, it's part of the mission. Oh, you have I have to, to photograph something behind there. Oh. Yeah. Do you think that'll draw any attention? Nah, we'll be fine. Yeah, I think if, so too. And also, I've got this very quiet machine gun. <laughs> Great. These guys suspect nothing. <laughs> Do you see that, Mason? Yeah, you murdered them. Yeah, it's good. Fine, you've got new instructions to die in a nuclear explosion. <laughs> because in many ways, you're a disposable piece of equipment and we're done with you. <laughs> we'll just bring on a new guy who's younger. It's fine. Fresher and sexier. A little bit shorter, a little bit blonder. But mm. I think you're going to like him. Yeah. You won't meet him because you'll be <laughs> dead. But I think you're going to like him. Yes, great, 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 great. Not a bad piece, Brosnan, right? We get it, Brosnan. You've tied your b- belt really tight to give yourself the illusion of a waistline. <laughs> we get it. Watch him put away nothing. Boop, boop, boop. Oh he got God. like the Zoolander. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you got to kill everybody here and then get the plane out of here, Mason. Okay. That's the only way we're going to succeed in this mission. This is incredible. I know. And you didn't think I was good at this game. I never said anything at <laughs> yeah, all, actually, regardless. You've been, you've been quite. You've been pretty quiet on the matter. I've been, if anything, <laughs> I've been somewhat supportive <laughs> of just all your endeavors generally. That's true. Yeah. You didn't want to do a podcast, but you didn't say anything. <laughs> That's right. And look, you look just at went along look with at, it. Look at us now. <laughs> just a couple of rad dudes. That's right. All right. One of these guys has a key card. Which one? To start the plane. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my God. This Get is... ready for this incredible takeoff, Mason. You're gonna love okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Can you potentially just crash into? I'm gonna spoil this for you. You can't potentially do anything. This is the extent of the things that I, it's it's turning, oh, by, it's turning itself, by itself. Okay, and cool. I'm firing the missiles yeah, or nice. machine guns, whatever that's this is supposed to cool. be. Cool. That's very cool. That's very. That's it. That's very cinematic. That's like watching a movie. You can't affect <laughs> you can, materially. You can't affect the plot of of a movie either. So I'm not none of this. Nice. None of this is me. You're not changing the. Uh, I'm not even in the plane. You're not even flying the plane. <laughs> you're just spinning it. You're just doing doughies. Anyway, so that's this game. It's not very good. So it just cuts to footage. Oh, oh nice FMV. Yeah, I know, right? So look, if you want us to play the game for the next movie, next week, this was not worth me <laughs> trying to get this piece of shit to work. Is there even a game for the next Oh, one? yeah, there is. It's YEA again. Yes. But it's modelled more off Goldeneye. And people say that in some ways it's better. And I've never played it, so I'm going to give it a go this okay. week and come back next week I'm and talk guess, about it. I'm going to guess it's worse. What a game, what an era. You got any notes, Mason? Oh my God, just miscellaneous notes that I didn't quite it's get to. It's my favourite thing. That we didn't, aw- didn't awkwardly shoehorn into the first part of the video. Okay, I've written here, does Elliot Carver do a little speech every time he's on a video chat because it seems exhausting for everyone? He always ends with, there's no news, like bad news. And everybody's like, ugh. This fucking guy every this day guy. with his shit. Uh, here's a question I have for you. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the viewers. Sure, throw uh, it out there. Is Bond allowed to do crimes while on a mission? Like, he's got a license to kill, yes. but does that expand to just any kind of crime? Because in this, he breaks into, like, the printers. Yeah. He's just breaking and entering, not wearing any gloves. He's getting these finger he's dirty had fingerprints. He's melted off. He's just getting them. He's looking through all the drawers. So surely yeah. you could just get him arrested, like, after that. Well, isn't it if you get captured... Yeah, as right. a MI6 agent, yep. they're like, we don't know him. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, so That's... I think you can do whatever you want <laughs> right. as long as you don't get captured. Uh, oh. I've got here, surely not everyone at the printers is getting paid enough to fist fight James Bond. No, absolutely not. Because everybody not. gets into it. Like the, <laughs> g- the guys with guns, sure, and like the security guards and stuff, but there looks like just like an NBC page yeah. just in a blazer <laughs> comes out, just leaps on a Bond and starts tackling him. But if, you work, if you're working with mates... And a lunatic runs oh, in. Oh, you jump in. Just touching to be, all the stuff. Because otherwise you, you wouldn't be part yeah. of the story. Exactly. Like afterwards, they'd be like, hey, hey Terry, you bloody tackled that guy. And you'd be like... Oh. Terry no tackle over yeah, here. Terry, yeah, Terry no tackle, yeah. But at one point, speaking of Bond's quips to no one, Bond says, huh, 
they'll print anything these days right after he's thrown a man into a printing <laughs> press and just minced him. What he should have said was, they'll print anything these days, including using ink, which is actually <laughs> the remains of a human corpse. <laughs> Don't use your phone while driving, Bond. Well, he had to. No, he just takes oh, a phone call. Oh, I thought you meant call. what he's using there. No, he just takes a phone call. I noticed the little things, James. It's very dangerous. Don't do it. I've also written he's, he's done an awful parking job. He he's outside care. of the line. He's doing I'm, crimes. I'm well aware. He's doing crimes, You don't have to use all these. <laughs> I've also written here, what does Bond have against Avis Rent-A-Car? I don't think he did it on purpose. No, he absolutely, he <laughs> launches it off the roof of a parking structure over a crowd of innocent people and then through the Avis Rent-A-Car storefront and then he's like, yes. Oh, oh so not the fact that he did it, yes. but the fact that afterwards he was like, I did it. I, really I did, did it, it yeah. yeah. He could have killed 20 people. Yeah, he probably did. Mm. But again, license to kill. Doesn't that's, matter, does yeah, it? Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Okay, I've got a couple more notes. Uh, again, Bond's terrible quips. And this is this is a testament to the downward uh, slope of these movies. Sure. At one point he says to Waylon, we seem to have developed a certain attachment to each other. And then he lifts his hand to show that they're handcuffed together. Did she, she not say it? That's for she us, knows. though. That's she, for us. she knows. She that's knows. for us. No, no. Oh, that's God. for us, man. <laughs> fine. After the, the motorcycle chase, which, what do you reckon about that? You enjoy it's it? It's good. Apparently the director told them that each one of them was driving. So that's why they have that little interaction. Ah, oh, that's fun. fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, afterwards, Bond says to Waylon, you were pretty good with that hook, you know, because they hook the helicopter. That's and good. she says, it comes with growing up in a rough neighbourhood. Does it? You're doing that every day, are you? <laughs> yeah. You're hooking a helicopter. It when comes with it. Let's say you get to school. <laughs> Just, let's see. Uh, and here's one more, last one. If Bond's plan is to destroy the stealth ship or damage it enough that it becomes visible to radar and then the Navy can destroy it, sure. why do you have to go into it? <laughs> Blow it up. Get on your little, your little, your little dinky little ship. Is he mounting a rescue of sorts? No. Yeah, you're right. It's all right. bad guys. It's exclusively bad guys yeah, on that yeah, ship. Yeah. And they're the worst of the worst because they know all these evil plans. And they're the media. Ugh. Yeah, yeah that's right. So just stay in your little ship, shoot it with a bazooka. Yeah, is all I'm you're saying. right. Yeah, terrific stuff. Did you know this is the first movie in film history to have its entire budget be covered? By product placement. That makes a lot of sense. So it's around $100 million, a bit over. The budget for this is about $50 million more than GoldenEye, uh -huh. and it made $339 million, which is slightly less. Possibly hurt because it opened the same week as Titanic. That'll do it. Yeah, so yeah. that'll definitely do it. But I feel like you don't get the sense that this is more expensive than the last one. I don't think it looks better. I don't think yep. it, the whole thing runs as smooth as the last one. It doesn't feel bigger than the last one. I guess the last one also did a lot of miniatures that this one doesn't seem to That's do. That's true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which we didn't really talk about last week. Okay, but, but it does have a scene where Bond and Waylin like rappel down the side of a building through Jonathan Price's face. Incredible. So that's, that's a lot of money. Why didn't he do a quip then? We tore this guy's face right down the middle of his face. <laughs> Wish I could do that to his real face because he's a bad guy. <laughs> so I just want to come back to because I want to check in on this every week. Yep. It said that this is the only Brosnan James Bond film where it doesn't end with him lying on top of a woman and in this, lying on top of a woman. There you go. Wow. So we're going to come back next week, obviously. But I mean, he, they're in the water, though. That doesn't count. Still counts, Mason. My, my, my favourite bit of the, about that is he's like, let's stay undercover. And then the ship, the rescue ship leaves. <laughs> Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. You're going to drown. Why isn't she like, no? no. Yeah. This what? is like Titanic, that movie I just saw. <laughs> We're going to die out here, Bond. <laughs> I think this is all right. I think this is all right I, too, yeah. It, it's shocking to me that I'm saying that. But there were moments when I'm like, I'm genuinely invested in this. But I think you're right. I think that the, the next couple have really coloured our memories of this. Because in retrospect, I do remember enjoying this at the cinema. Okay, fair it had, enough. Because it, it gets get all, everything you want. It's got the gals. It's got the guns. It's got the gadgets. Mm, three Gs. The three Gs you need. That's yeah, right. Yeah, terrific. We're back on our Bondathon. Bondathon? Bondgasm? <laughs> It's not inaccurate. No. And also, presumably, only one person gets the Bondgasm. Yes. Bond. Or maybe not, because there is a particular line at the end of this, which we will get to. Oh, that's to. right. Okay, yes. Because we are, of course, talking about the world is not enough. Ah, uh, the wheels are coming off a little bit, I feel. I feel like a lot for this one. It's quite dull. It's really dull. That's the biggest problem with it, yeah. yeah. Look, we haven't got to Die Another, Die Another Day. Day, which obviously we will next week. You yeah, know, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that one is, it's a mile a minute and there's crazy gadgets and girls and dumb things Palace happening. Palace is made out of ice. Yeah, but this one's just like, I don't know, it's someone who wants oil <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, it feels to me like one of the most boring of the more bonds. Yeah. It goes on a bit and then you sort of slowly make your way to another location mm -hmm. and then he's got to surveil the location for a long time and have a few conversations. <laughs> yes, and... that's right. Yeah, look, this will also go on and on, but leave a like. 
because you know <laughs> we're we're, in, we're doing we're in this too. We're yeah. in this with you. That's right. We're going to do this together. <laughs> that being said, I, I think there are some high points. Not the opening, which is just him walking into a room and there's a minor confrontation, and then he repels out a window. Not even using a gadget. He's it's, using the greatest gadget of all: a wounded man. <laughs> I guess he I ties guess the rope right. to the guy and then then leaps out the side. What I enjoyed about this is the assassin he's pursuing. She she's on the run because she's like, you can't protect me. There's a man that I fear even more than you kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. She's come into this with like a sniper rifle and a bunch of throwing knives and like a shotgun that shoots grenades and like a, like a turret on the back of a boat. She's presumably been working at that bank for months, maybe yeah. years. She's like a world... Just disappear, lady. She's like a world-class <laughs> assassin, you know? The bad guy doesn't even show up till halfway through the movie. Who knows what he's doing? Yeah, he doesn't show up till like the 48-minute mark or something like yeah. that. Would you want to talk about uh, Mr. Bullet to the head? Mr. Bullet at his brain. Yeah, Robert Carlyle. He's a favourite actor of yours, I assume. Yeah, like he's train great. Trainspotting, yeah. other things. Hamish Macbeth. Mm -hmm, sure. <laughs> All of these things, but he's kind of a knockoff Blofeld, like looks-wise. Yeah, uh. I like the idea that, you know, he doesn't feel pain, but they're also like, he doesn't feel pain, and every day as the bullet inches closer and closer to his death, he gets stronger. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Look, it's no diamond face. Yeah. Which is obviously more ridiculous, uh -huh. but I, I, don't, I can't buy that. Mm. Not even for a second. They should have been like, every day the bullet inches closer to his brain and he loses feeling, but he gains strength. And also he has bear traps for feet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> give him right, something, yeah. give him something like jaws. Clank, you know? clank, snap, snap. Exactly. Yeah, I get yeah. I do like though the that MI6 is infiltrated. I always enjoy that in the Bond films, the few times that it happens. Because it kind of turns everything on its head. You because know what I mean? you love bureaucratic bungling is what you like. <laughs> That's right, I do. But I like the idea that, you know, Bond and the people he work with, they're not even safe at home. I mean, sometimes it'll be something like Q will plug in a laptop or, <laughs> or a USB drive that he definitely shouldn't. Sure, that's right. But I, I like the idea of, you know, the bomb and the pal and it's, you know, tethered to the money and all of those mm. things. I think that's quite nice. It's also a better opening than the actual opening. It gets things going. It's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I guess you could even take away the opening sequence and replace it with a couple of lines of dialogue. Yeah. I went to the bank and I got this money. I repelled out the window using the greatest weapon of all a man. <laughs> That's now right. I'm here. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. What do you think of the superboat? When Q's like, don't steal my superboat. It's not all, ready. First of all, he's using MI6 resources for his own personal gain because he's like, that's my retirement boat. <laughs> you know what? He's really old and he doesn't care anymore. Also, John Cleese, I, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> what I love about that boat chase, it really highlights what a prick James Bond is. He's just ruining everyone's day and ruining lunches, just driving over things and through things. That boat somehow works on land and that's, that's, right, that's yeah. fine, I guess. There's a bit also, you know, where he goes underwater and it's the worst series of cuts to get him underwater. Uh -huh. That boat clearly can't do it. There's like a fade and then he's underwater adjusting the tie. Mm -hmm. Brosnan's idea. And then he's out of it. It's just not, yeah, mm, you know. Mm. Speaking of Desmond <laughs> Llewellyn though. Yes, Q. This is his last film. That's right. I didn't know that he died in a car accident at age 85. I thought he died of old, old age. age. right? Yeah. That's incredible to me mm, that yeah. that happened. And it was street racing. Wow. Yeah. What's with that last line? He, he says to Bond, I've always taught you two things. Never let him see you bleed and also have an escape route. No, the only things he's ever said to Bond are, bring back my equipment in good condition. Yeah. yeah. Or you're dead. You're, de you're dead, <laughs> you're, mate, mate. You're bashed. I do feel like, though, always have an escape plan is kind of implied in the stuff that he gives him, mm. including the avalanche proof jacket. Yeah, right. That is the best example of a so specific Bond gadget that you would never give it to him for any reason. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Here's the thing. I've been thinking about it. And I think Q's thought process is when Bond is going to a location, yeah. Q figures out the worst, most irresponsible <laughs> thing Bond could possibly do. And then he builds a gadget to counter it. So he goes, okay, well, Bond is going to be in the mountains. The worst thing, the dumbest thing a man could possibly do <laughs> was cause an avalanche and expect to survive that avalanche. So Bond's going to do it. So I'll have to build him an avalanche proof jacket, right? Yeah, you're absolutely That's not that wrong. That maybe is yeah. what it is, yeah. They were obviously ramping up for Desmond Llewellyn and leaving this franchise with the introduction of R, John Cleese, mm -hmm. who's like, Bond... You better bring this car back. Like, don't say that, because you know he's just going to cut it in half if you say <laughs> something like that. It does feel like the end of an era having mm. Desmond Llewellyn go. Because, right. you know, he was a staple of this franchise, and it really shifts gear in the next movie, and then again when it reboots. Well, he was planning to be in the next one. All right. So, you know, he probably would have been around for it. I've just written here, a funny bit would have been if Q was doing the fake elevator exit. <laughs> <laughs> like when he's like, always have an escape route, and then he's just... 
slowly steps down <laughs> yeah. and then Bond, Bond looks over the desk and he's like, Q, you're, you're still there, man. You? Maybe I'm on an escalator. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's get on to, to the other villain of this movie, I guess. Spoiler alert for this. Uh, it came out in 99. Oh, it's Electric know. King. It's Electric King the whole time. You if, know the real villain is? Bullet to the head man. Well, I mean, yes, but also Electric King's father for building that oil pipeline. That's a really good point, yeah. I mean, back in the day, I didn't even think about it, but I'm like, really? <laughs> Maybe build some solar panels, man. Some wind. Some it was wind, 99. Wind oil was hot stuff. People loved it. People <laughs> were bathing in it. You remember? <laughs> These days, I could if I wanted to. It's like a center barrel. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I could set a whole bunch up in my backyard and shoot them doom style and have them blow up. <laughs> so... This movie, though, I feel, if I hadn't known, does have you second-guessing about Elektra. Yeah, right. There's enough red herrings in there, and the performance is good enough where what, what is going on with this character? And I think it's a good reveal that... I guess the reason the other villain doesn't show up till halfway is because he's not really the main villain. She is. Mm, true. Makes yeah. you think, doesn't it? it all the, does. All the clues were there. Yeah. Apparently, though, in early stages of production, the plan was that she was going to survive till the end, and then it would conclude with... James Bond putting her in a hospital while she recovered from Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, I see. Yeah, but then <laughs> this ending didn't test well and they were like, nah, the audience was like, no, boo, shoot her. Yeah, right. Shoot her in cold blood. Shoot her while she's sitting on a bed or something. Yeah, man, that's straight up cold-blooded James Bond, which it we is. talked about last yeah. week. Yeah. Look, I do want to talk about the torture machine as well and the other Bond woman who shows up in this franchise. But of course, this does have a video game. Should we video game? Let's do it right now. I'm sick of these video games. They just add more work is what I'm saying. Oh, I see, right. <laughs> All right, so this is a lesser known uh, Bond franchise title, I would say. So I'm going to take you to the level. Remember the infiltration of MI6 and the bomb goes off? Yes. Get this. Uh -huh. They've tweaked it so more fun. A SWAT team like Storm. And you have to fend off all these attackers. Oh, it's not just a quick time event. You have to keep shoving Q out of the way. <laughs> no, basically. That's a Q time <laughs> yeah. event. Well, we do actually see Q and we also get to the boat chase, oh. which I'm sure you're very excited about. Yes. Yeah. So this is actually the swan song of Eurocom. I'll, I'll name a few later, but they did James Bond Jr. the video game. Oh, can game. you shoot M just quietly? This has been often... Is that Tanner? Shoot no, him. That's just something. Not shooting anyone. If you shoot it's one... money penny. Don't shoot money penny. If, if, you, if you shoot one person who you're not supposed to, the, you fail the mission. Wow. So it's pretty, it's pretty harsh. I mean, that's... Get out of the way! <laughs> I'll just let him get shot. Yeah, as nice. long as I don't shoot yeah, him, it's Yeah, on fine. a technicality, that's totally fine, yeah. Like <laughs> I went James down Bond. to tie his shoelaces. <laughs> well, he shouldn't have. It's not the time, is it? It's hardly and the time. As you can tell from the bottom right corner, Bond is officially single in this game, <laughs> so he can sleep with whoever he wants. Oh, man. So, yeah, this is often compared to, obviously, the other Bond game that mm -hmm. was on the Nintendo 64. Yeah, right. There was two versions of this. There's a PlayStation version. This uh -huh. is considered oft superior. It looks pretty solid. Yeah, like, well, it's kind it, of... because it was at the tail end of the Nintendo 64. It's Eurocom's last game. Uh-huh, uh -huh. for the, And they kind of considered it their swan song. Yeah, right. And it's running off the Quake engine. They wanted to make it the fastest first-person shooter on the Nintendo 64. And I think it is. Yeah, it feels, yeah. It's really quick compared uh -huh. to Goldeneye especially. But I'm not sure if that is a good thing or not. Because Goldeneye is a bit more methodical and this is more kind of run and gun. Right. So it's fun, but it's a bit hectic but in the that way the that... But is that Bond vibe? But I mean, yeah. you know, I think maybe the Brosnan Bonds are pretty run and gun. Yeah, that's true. The movies. Yeah, I like the reload action. Oh, it's great. And that's actually one thing they, they didn't have in the last Nintendo 64 game. If you remember, his hand would go off screen. That's right. And to scratch just, his balls. Yeah, that's right. But now, like, even yeah, you load the shells and things like that, yeah. which is cool. Well, there sure are a lot of guys that have infiltrated the MI6 guys. security. My favourite gun, though, is this super duper watch. Oh, yeah, that's here we go. Oh, my goodness. Don't stun him. Doesn't matter, does it? You just load stuff. it again. Right, I'm off. Let's not use this watch, eh? Of course, in the mm. in the movie, at this point, there's only really one assailant. Yes, that's so right. So am I correct in assuming that at the end of this, uh, there'll be a hot air balloon chase with like 50 <laughs> guys? There is actually... 50 hot air balloons? There is actually in the next level. Yes. And you can't actually attack the assassin. You can't yeah. kill her. Oh. You're just supposed to take her alive, even though she ends up dying as she does yeah, right, in the movie. Right. The idea is that you just got to chase them, chase her through the London Underground and all this other kind of stuff. But oh. what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm activating the security systems. I'm getting Dame Judy Dench locked down. <laughs> I Man. hope they rotoscoped her. I hope she had to wear a ping pong ball. Not suit bad, for this. right? Pretty good. Mm, Pretty good, Mason. No, no, quite bad actually. Slightly better than Golden Eyes. Yeah, it's, it's very, so vaguely safe. better. She's safe. I now. like how the it. security center sign was the was the Bond uh, font. Yeah, that's that how it worked. <laughs> so they've, they've adapted them all in MI6. It's a classy establishment. Oh, that's a big old gun. He's yeah, got you there. know what it is. You know what a, I enjoy about this? And we'll, see, we'll see it in a moment. Oops. Is that the villains sort of, the bad guys sort of realistically stumble after you shoot them. <laughs> They're like, oh, can I, I'm really struggling. Yeah. I have a family. I'm dead. There's not the finesse though of the last one. You know, 
where you shoot them in the hand and they kind of they hold it and they shake it. Uh -huh. There's none of that. It just kind of they yeah, just right. kind of uh -huh. stumble and fall down. Oh. Yeah. But I like. I think this is a really good extension of the movie because often you know when they throw in a mission, you know, from a like in a, in a game like this, if it's got entirely nothing to do with and it's horrible. But I yeah, think this right. is a actually a really fun addition. They're all dead. They'll be okay though. Yeah, they'll be Should fine. Should I use my bond watch? I don't want to. Does it have anything besides a stunner? Uh, you can use like like grapple to very specific points oh, yeah, later. Cool, cool. But oh, I don't yeah. need to do any of that in this level, unfortunately. Activate the sprinklers. Yeah, because there's fires. He's a double O agent. That doesn't mean <laughs> license to uphold the fire code. <laughs> you know His job is to kill all the men and bed all the women and some of the men. Oh, Mr. Yeah, and also kill some of the women. Some will kill some women also, <laughs> yes. He does it As all. As a last resort, he'll kill some of the women. Yeah, that's right, yeah. One of my friend's sisters one out. She's just dead. Also, this is much better than the last one that we played. Oh, by, good. like, a lot. Yeah, I think it's also a little bit less confusing than Goldeneye. Yes. Like, it's technically better in almost every way. Uh-huh. But what's missing? It's just, I, I think it just feels like more of the same and it's not yeah. as innovative. Okay. And that's it's not really a fault because, you know, Goldeneye did so much right and this builds on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just, just the way it is. Okay, so remember the guy who has the lapel pin? Yeah, He's King. about to explode. So I got to go find him and be like, don't explode. <laughs> guess what? Are we too late for he him explodes, to not explode? Yeah, 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 yeah But that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Also, this is incomprehensible if you hadn't seen the movie because I started playing this before I rewatched the movie and I'm like, what is any of this? Who's this guy? And, you know, he tells you about the pin. He's like, oh, he's it was still the alive. pin. It was the pin. But in no. the movie, Bond's like, it was the pin. I yeah, figured yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever happens in that movie. Who's to say? You know what? I enjoyed the fact, and I think this is new for the game, that the uh, the doctor he's looking for was named Dr. Warm Flash. <laughs> it was kind of... I didn't even notice it's that. It, I feel like it's supposed to be like a, like a sexy sexy so doctor sexy. name, but they're, uh, they're limited by what they can get away with in this. Like you can machine, it sounds like menopause, you can, right? Yeah, exactly. You can machine gun 200 men, <laughs> but you may not have a woman with a you know an innuendo-ish name. Absolutely not. Shotties are good. Yeah, shotties are good, mate. Oh, yeah. Shotties are right. Yeah, he's a good man. <laughs> got that guy. Got this guy too. Yeah, you got him. That guy lived. For now. Ooh. Hey, hey, hey. Look like he's in a scuba suit. Where's he off to? You know what? They probably came in from the Thames. He probably, probably came in from the Thames. You're approaching the Thames. <laughs> yeah. This is, that's the natural uh, That's the natural fauna of the Thames. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. She knows my name. I bet if you played it, would say Mason. She'd say, let's go, Mason. Uh, that's true, yeah. Let's go, Nick Mason. <laughs> that's at right. Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, she'd that's say. That's correct, yes. Oop. Love your Instagram, she'd say. Nick Mason, <laughs> N-I-C-K-M-A-S-E-A-U. Yeah, you make a lot, of, a lot of fun little posts, she'd say. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The thing about this as well is uh, it's actually got spoken dialogue, which Goldeneye didn't. Because ah. it used the N64 expansion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it, they were able to put in 500 lines of dialogue. Oh. And they only got one actor back. Guess who it was? Uh, Denise Richards? I played a nuclear psychiatrist in a James Bond movie. No! Q. Yes! Huh. No, it's R. Uh, you were close. Oh, it's John Cleese. Okay. Yeah, John Cleese. Right, right, so right, right. All right, here we go. This is the exit. You're going to love And you're going to see Q in all his glory. Q in video game fashion, like you've oh never God. seen before. A fully rotoscoped Q. <laughs> it, I just bump into that guy, that's fine. Yeah. I don't even worry about it. Look at him. Oh my goodness, he's so rotund. <laughs> they did him dirty, I feel. Yeah. All right, I'm going to show you the chase. Okay, I'm ready. You excited? Yeah. You shouldn't be. Look at this. Oh. Oh my god. It's a heart wrenching chase. Yeah, I'm controlling this. I'm not. You, you can't are. control it. They didn't program it in. So it's just a cutscene. You don't get to actually use the boat. Oh, this is still a cutscene. Yeah, yeah, this is the cutscene. I'm not wow. doing anything. Yeah, so there you go. So but you see, the thing is that perhaps. You want to use the boat, driving right? Driving the boat would be an ex exciting extension of this, you yeah. know, the game itself. <laughs> yeah, You'd enjoy absolutely. that. You'd enjoy playing in the boat. It really makes you look like you're going to drive the boat, right? Yeah. Also, you know it says don't kill the assassin? You can yeah. kill the assassin straight away and it punishes you. It's like, no! <laughs> don't kill the assassin. I'll do it right now if I can. Okay, great. See, it's well, over. That was quick. Wow. I did it. So just quickly before we wrap this up, yes. Eurocom have actually made a bunch of games that people may remember and like. Uh, James Bond Jr., as mentioned. Mm -hmm. Sensible Soccer. Remember Sensible I Soccer? Of course I do. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, Mortal Kombat 4 on the Nintendo 64, mm -hmm. which I would argue 
No, this is only my opinion. That's my favourite Mortal Kombat game because it's the one I'm best at for some reason. Oh, okay, right, yeah. right, right. It's not about fun. It's about being the best. That's right. <laughs> Isn't that video games, though? Yeah, I guess so. So this is the worst level in the game. It's a horrible rail shooter. It's just atrocious and very difficult. But they also did James Bond Nightfire, the follow-up to this, which is another very good uh, Bond game. Uh -huh. But it's not based on any of the movies, but it is kind of the Brosnan era. And they also did Predator Concrete Jungle, which we've go, looked at. Yeah. Uh, Batman Begins, the video game, which is... <laughs> yep, sure. uh, Goldeneye Reloaded, and they also did 007 Legends, which we Ooh. might come back to next week because guess what? There's, oh, there's another game, isn't there? There's a bloody Die Another Day there's stuff in movie. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's uh, the worst one. Yeah. That's very indicative of the fall of the Brosnan Bond franchise where you're like, at the end you fight a guy who shoots electricity. That's <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I want to talk about that torture machine. Okay. Bond torture is synonymous with Bond. Oh, right? yes. Some of them are not good, like the drilling machine, which takes away his memories or something. Oh, yes, Remember sure. that newer Inspector one? Inspector or Yeah, Skyfall? whatever. Yeah. But, you know, there's obviously the rope getting hit the nuts. There's the laser. I think this is one of the best ones. Oh, you think so? Very simple. You know, hearing the click of it and seeing it mm. press into his spine. Pierce Brosnan's doing a good job of being like, ooh, no good. Ooh, that's smart, he says. What I also like about this is he's injured at the start. And this is something that I guess Skyfall does. Uh -huh. And he's injured for the rest of it. So there yeah. is that kind of sense of like, he's not at his best for you know this what? movie. They should have let 009 cover this. <laughs> I mean, he'd been investigating ahead of time. I don't know who or he or she is, but I reckon he should have. And then he goes to the doctor mm. and he seduces her <laughs> to get his way, even though he's clearly clearly not up for it. Or he's up for it. He's always up for it. But also, I, I, I feel like surely at this point... All the women of MI6 have like warned each other off this dude. Like <laughs> yeah, they've all got a story about this guy. And also surely M would be like, oh, you've been cleared for duty. Yeah. Um, hey, doctor, did you get seduced for this? Oh, yeah. you did. Okay, you're all fired. <laughs> all of you are fired. But you, Bond, get out. <laughs> We're putting 009 on this. Uh, I've just written here, it's good to see the gladiator Vulcan. I've also written Vulcan is in this movie and Vulcan is in all caps. Yeah, so for people who don't know. People know. Yeah, of course. But I mean, let's assume you've hit your head in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, and you didn't watch Australian Gladiators in 1996. That's right. So John Saru is better known in Australia as a Vulcan. Yes. He was one of the gladiators on the, the Australian version of, I guess, American Gladiators. So, yes. Mike so. Whitney was the referee. That's right. <laughs> who dares wins? Uh, yes, that's right. I shouldn't put all this in. This isn't No, good. keep it all in. It's all good <laughs> stuff. So if you're like, well, listen, I like the idea of this man being Electric King's bodyguard. He's certainly very sinister. But imagine if he was holding like a gigantic Q-tip <laughs> and he was swinging it at somebody in like protective headgear and a little unitard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Then you can find that probably Oh, you YouTube. definitely can. Yeah. Uh, Mason, we didn't mention this for Goldeneye and I'm sure we got comments, but toot toot. Here comes the Robbie Cole train. Very good, yes. Recurring right. character. That's right. He's a Very, great addition. I think he is too. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame he didn't shoot Bond when he had the chance. <laughs> Why doesn't he? I don't know. It's so weird. I mean, they've clearly got a pre-existing relationship. Yeah, because he shot him in the knee. Yeah. So why not a bit of quid pro quo? Mm. You know? I think of the characters we see in the Brosnan Bond series, I think M is a good addition to the, Definitely. the Craig, and I think Robbie Coltrane would have been as well. Yeah. Alas. Alas. He's a good ending. He's got a good death. That's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, Denise Richards is in this. <laughs> she was apparently attracted to the role of Dr. Christmas Jones, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a name that nobody would ever have, uh, <laughs> as she found the part to be brainy, athletic, and had a depth of character, a change in direction from previous Bond girls. That's what they always say, though. Isn't it just? Uh, the this producers, isn't like your classic Bond The producers Bond girls. always lie, and then they're yeah. like, this one isn't going to be like all the other Bond girls. Yeah. She's in a different movie. She should be in Die Another Day. Yeah. Because I know uh, she gets a lot Tomb of... Tomb Raider. Yeah. Ex well, that's obvious homage, that outfit. But yeah. if you put her in the next one, nobody yeah. would have noticed. No, that's I know true. she gets a lot of flack for this. And look, she's not good in it and she doesn't fit. But it's not her fault. It's Denise Richards in this boring-ass Bond movie. Right, exactly. It doesn't yeah. go together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she's in all the scenes where it's just Bond in like a, like a Russian Department of Energy jumpsuit, just filling in forms. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. not the kind of movie she, she should no. be in. So the ending of this, they get in a submarine. Yes. And what's disappointing about this is, and you don't always need to go this way, like a big Bond lair or a castle or inside a volcano, but it's just slippery men awkwardly climbing <laughs> over poles in this awkward fist fight. Sounds like a perfect movie for a lot of people. <laughs> sure. Don't kink shame people who want slippery men on poles. Come on. Yeah, you're not wrong. But they're horizontal, aren't they? They should be vertical. Am I right, fellas? Or ladies, women can like Ooh, men too. It's very true. Yeah, but it's just not a good 
finale, really, is it? No, not really. They no. just climb into a submarine and, you know, <laughs> you've seen it. I've seen movies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about this specific thing because I remember at the time you took somebody, like a friend, to see this movie and there was a particular line at the end of this She'd movie. She'd never seen a Bond movie before, <laughs> no. I don't think. And, and you'd like, seen the previous ones. And they're, like, right. they're not bad. This is pretty solid. And yeah, yeah and it ends with the line. Christmas only comes once a year. And I just looked over to her and I went, I'm sorry. I don't... <laughs> This like movie, you wrote this it. This movie's bad. Yeah, that's, that's the that's the chance you take on a franchise, you know? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this one, of course, because I like to check back every week uh, to find out whether it ends with Bond lying on top of a woman. Mm. Yes. It certainly does. And this time in thermal imaging, if I remember mm. correctly. Yes. Looks like a bit of a dead fish. <laughs> Just quickly on budget before we final thoughts. Again, they managed to cover the $120 million with product placement for this movie. It did well, like it did okay, but mm-hmm. having that boost of that amount of money, then it did better than well. Perfect. Good enough for another movie. Oof. All right. Yeah, we'll be back. Maybe 50,000 likes. I'm not kidding. Is this a good one? I don't know. I think maybe if... <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing, James. Maybe if I was watching, it was a, it was a rainy day and I'm inside and it came on the TV. Maybe you're like... I don't mind Pierce Brosnan. I don't mind Bond movies. I'll watch this Bond movie. But the fact that we're under the pump to watch it. Yeah, sure. And make notes about it. Yeah. Upsetting. Yeah. Didn't like it. Kind of boring. Kind of a waste of my time. What a journey we've been on with these Brosnan Bonds. It's been an epic tale, hasn't it? Do you feel like they reflect life? Because it starts off and you're feeling pretty good about yourself. And then things (laughs) go on and you're like... Do I hate everything that's ever happened? <laughs> My goodness, this really did have an effect on you. It certainly did at the time and now. Please leave a like if you could. We've done all the Bonds. We've done all the video games. That's coming up in this also. I mean, not all the Bonds. No. There's many more Bonds to go. Oh, boy, is there. From earlier in the history of the world. Yeah, yeah, But I yeah. feel this more is a journey of a man just seeing what he can get away with <laughs> in his life and just slowly getting, like, creepier and more lecherous. Yeah. And just drinking harder and trying less, you know? <laughs> I'm talking Bond, not Brosnan. Like, oh, Bro- no. You can't fault him yeah. for these movies, really. He's good in all of them. Well, straight out of the gate with the gun barrel sequence. Yes. When you see the bullet whiz towards you and That's, pass yeah. the camera. That's when you know... This ain't your grandpappy's no. Bond movie anymore. No. That's I've, Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is the first and only time the, in a Bond movie that the bullet comes out of the gun. Like, we were so used to it at this point. We're like, well, nothing's going to thrill us. We've seen everything Bond has to offer. Ugh! One of the things I really dislike about the worst Bond moments yes. is how he's inexplicably good at things that he shouldn't be good at. Give me an example. Surfing. It's right. just he's just <laughs> yeah. surfing it at the start. He's the MI6 surfing into surf Korea. Team. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh-huh. That being said, though, the opening sequence of this where he infiltrates the army and he's selling arms and he's wearing his cool shades and all the hovercraft and the chase and all that. I feel all of that is classic Bond. Yes. But then, when he gets released, that's when the wheels really fall off this. Mm. It's the song. The song lets you know. It's the worst song ever written. Do you think the song was a curse? It may be a curse, yeah. There are elements of this where I go, oh, okay, I see where they were going with this. Again, this is their borrowed elements from previous Bond. This is meant to be Roger Moore silliness. Yes. Like, if, if they gave a Roger Moore movie a budget of $100 million, yeah. this is what they would have come up with, ultimately. Yeah. And so some of it, I'm like, oh, I, I kind of get it. But the idea that this is still the bond of Goldeneye is absolutely thrown yeah. out of the window. Just quickly getting back to the song, though. I'm not a musician <laughs> yes. at all. My knowledge of music is limited at best. And what and what happened to you here is now you'll never be a musician because this disrupted something <laughs> in your brain. broken my brain. But genuinely, though, are there missing notes and words in this song? Because it feels like like they've just cut out random parts of this song. I think that was maybe kind of cool at the time. Madonna's always been about embracing the latest musical trend. And she rapped of, that time. She, yeah, that's for sure. I'm drinking a salate. I get a double shate. She's also in this, and I think she's fine in her, in her limited screen time. Yeah, she's, sure. uh, she's the fencing instructor. There's some wonky as shit CGI in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, like the bit where they're fighting on hovercrafts. It's very clearly they're just standing in a nothing yeah. space. We may as well talk about it now, but the windsurfing sequence... Might yep. be the dumbest thing in cinema. I've referred to it here as the rocket car laser chase parasailing bit. <laughs> I also feel like the gadgets and tech here just get way out of hand. He mentioned something interesting. Cypher is pursuing new research. He claims that what they're doing in Africa is the missing piece. A weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <laughs> and again, that speaks to that 
kind of what if you gave Roger Moore $100 million? What would Roger Moore do with $100 million? He'd probably give it to charity. He probably would. He seemed like a very nice man. Mm. But things like DNA replacement, VR glasses, the laser torture is out of control. Just that spinning. Well, yeah. Luck alone would not let you <laughs> walk out of that but room. But I feel that's, again, this is reminiscent of, of the old ones that they went, okay, let's do... The laser torture thing from Goldfinger, yes. but times a million. Yeah. Wouldn't that be better? Let's do nope. It. No. <laughs> You've made it worse. How do you feel about the invisible car, though? Because it's not the worst thing in this movie. No, it's not the worst thing in the movie, but it sort of defeats the point of Bond being the world's greatest super spy. Again, I feel like in giving me the gadget, I could do the same job Bond did. I, yeah. could, I could get in that car and turn it invisible and roll it into somebody's headquarters. Easy. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that people always point to as a high point of this is the fencing, because it's visceral and real. Right, that they oh. sped it up just a little. I don't think it's good. I think it escalates wildly for no reason. <laughs> They're just smashing through each other and, and yeah. suits of armor and glass cases. I also don't buy the villain's plan at all. The fact that they've completely altered his DNA so he's a British white guy. Yeah. And I also kind of like the idea that he did model himself on Bond. But the fact that this guy literally fucking drops out of the sky from nowhere and he's getting yeah. a knighthood and he's the talk of the town. Does anybody want to look into this guy for even a second? Here's the thing. Look, I want to talk about everybody's plans. First of all, in re-watching this, Diamond Face's face yeah. doesn't have nearly as many diamonds in it as I remember. No. And they're not as impressive as I remember either. And also, why didn't anybody take him out? They're he just on the surface! He was in prison for like months. <laughs> he was in MI6 custody and they didn't take him out? They're like, no, I better keep those in but there. But they're literally just sitting on the surface of his skin as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To your point, Gustav Graves, he just, he does come out of nowhere. And I think at the time, I'm like, that makes no sense. How did, how did they not, how did MI6 not dig deep enough? Yeah. But in modern times, Times, the current Prime Minister of Great Britain will not confirm or deny how many children he has. <laughs> and people are still like, that seems fine. <laughs> anyway, sorry to get political on this, James, by naming someone in the political sphere. I've warned you about this. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Yeoh was supposed to return for the Hong Kong stuff that appears yep. in this in this movie. Uh -huh. uh, that couldn't be worked out, unfortunately. But they do introduce the character of Jinx. And I've just written here, the first interaction between them is so horrible that it might be the worst scene ever written in a movie. Is that when they, she emerges from the water? Yep. Like, I mean, it's, a classic, Andrus, callback. it's yeah. a classic callback. Though Daniel Craig did it better. Like, if we're, <laughs> if we're talking callbacks. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then they have some sort of conversation about he's a he's an ornithologist or something. He's a bird watcher. Well, she says, my friends call me Jinx. And he says, my friends call me James Bond. Guess what, James <laughs> Bond? You don't have any friends. <laughs> and who introduced, what do your friends call you? My friends call me my full name. <laughs> name. That's right. I'm sure he turned around later and he's like, oh my God, nobody I know likes me. <laughs> Again, in, in second viewing this, I didn't. I'm, what I more hated was the idea of we're going to shove this new character in your face and she's going to get a spin off. She's going to be your new face. You're going to love it. You're going to kiss it. Right? <laughs> but I didn't mind her as sort of the opposite number of James Bond. They kind of just use each other for sex before yeah. their own separate missions. That's fine with me. I think she's fine in this, but I think together they don't mesh. <laughs> At yeah. all. They have no chemistry. Yeah, right. They just kind of stand in front of each other, just kind of one-upping each other with terrible <laughs> right. dialogue. One thing I enjoyed yeah. very much, so obviously the other Bond girl is Miranda Frost. Yes. As played by Rosamund Pike. First appearance in a movie. Good on her. Yeah. She went on to do Doom. And other stuff, probably. And much better movies. Much better movies, right? <laughs> but there's a moment where a duel, a fencing duel between Jinx and Miranda Frost on, on the cargo plane at the end. Hot stuff. And there's some, and there's a just absolute ripping dialogue where I think <laughs> Frost says to Jinx, I can read your every move. And then Jinx hits her with a Bible and then stabs her through the chest. No, with it's a, the art of war. It's the art of war. There we go. And then <laughs> get it may it? as well be the Bible. That's my Bible, the art of war. And then she's like, read this. But there's a moment afterwards where Bond comes back in and Bond obviously, you know, he's been betrayed by this woman. Yeah. You know, he, he trusted her. He ended up in prison. He's got a lot of feelings about the whole situation. Scorpions. Yeah, right. The, All that, that scorpion shit happened that, to that him. That whole deal. And then Jinx is like standing over a dead body and she's like, I think I broke her heart. And there's a moment where you can sort of feel Bond go, Oh, that's what I do to everybody all the time <laughs> is I kill someone and then I say a little quip. I don't think about what it does to other people. And she's she's done it. Of, of the one but he really goes, oh, no. <laughs> That's incredible. So I just did also a bit of reading on the Jinx spin-off film. Oh, I'm ready. So because of the low box office performance of Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle, 
and Tomb Raider 2, MGM pulled the plug on this because they were like, well, these female-centric action movies don't work. They would if you made a good one, right. don't you yeah. think? Yeah. Look, we hate to get political again because, you know, talking about women is often considered political. Mm, that's right. Yeah. So I do want to talk about the potential future of this franchise that didn't happen okay. and some that did. But do you want to see the electricity suit in action but in a terrible video game? Yeah, let's do it. Ah! <laughs> now, funnily enough, Die Another Day never got a video game. Huh. Devastating, But there were so many delightful characters. But this game is called 007 Legends. It came out a week before Skyfall. Oh, I'm, I'm sort of aware of this. This is the one mm-hmm. where... Bond gets shot like he does in Skyfall. Correct. And then as he's falling off a bridge, he imagines all his previous yes. adventures, basically. He either imagines it or they're flashbacks. Right, uh-huh. But the Daniel Craig is in a different continuity than the other one, so right. presumably he's having some kind of stroke. I don't know. What- maybe his ego is running out of control. Like maybe that's what a bullet does to you. He's like, yeah, I did the laser thing in Goldfinger. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, yeah. So that's the thing. They get every Bond in here. So you've got Goldfinger on Her Majesty's Secret Service, License to Kill, Die Another Day, Moonraker, and then free Skyfall DLC. Oh, yeah, so we're right. going to jump straight into Die Another Day. <laughs> right. We're not going to do the Ice Hotel because oh, it's a what? very long mission, I but see. we can do both the Ice Lake oh. and then the cargo plane scene. My goodness. Yeah. And you'll notice there is a lot of characters that their likenesses make it over. Some people even voice their characters, like Gustav Graves mm, right. returns and voices his own character. Oh. Others, it's just the likeness. Yeah, like yeah. Jaws, it's just the likeness. Uh-huh. They take the three Blofelds and mash them together oh my to goodness. make the, the one Blofeld. Into some sort of Doom-style <laughs> ravenous tentacle monster. The thing about this game is, though, it's really awful. Oh, that's I a shame. I had to play a lot of it to get to this because I had to unlock Die Another yeah, Day. Right. A lot of the criticisms of this were it's a knockoff kind of Call of Duty. And oh, it right. is. Because yeah, yeah. it's mostly like the final mission uh-huh. Of a Bond movie. Yeah. So you infiltrate somebody's office. Yes. And you do a lot of hacking and uh-huh. finding switches and shit like that. And then you shoot everybody. And then you have like a quick time event punch up with the villains. I see. So you fight Odd Job oh. or whoever else. Yeah. You went for at least 30 <laughs> seconds with nothing happening. Did you yeah. notice that? I'm being chased by Diamond Face. Oh, I see. Right, so right, right, right. You have to activate. It tells you when to activate oh, your see. stuff. Right. So you can't okay. just do it. You can't just activate the missiles. It's like, now it's time to activate your missiles. Yeah, right. Now it's time to activate your traction control. He never overtakes. Oh, it's right, all yeah. so very much on rails. And it's really hard to avoid anything. Uh. And when you spin out, you can't regain control. Oh, and I even practice this because I'm like, I should get better at this no. to make a better recording. Uh-huh. But I didn't get better. If anything, I'm worse because I've <laughs> overthought it. Right. And I'm much, much worse. But, you know, who would have thought that of all the Brosnan Bonds to choose from, they chose this one? I mean, I guess it's the most video gamey. Yeah, but yeah, that is definitely true, yeah. Well, I was going to say the whole point behind this aspect of the video, of the movie, is mm. it's like a battle sequence between two Bond cars. And yet, that was such a huge selling point of the movie. Yeah, yeah, and yet for most of this, you're just running away from... Oh, you're still doing it. You're just running away from like a targeting yeah, computer. Yeah, but now i got to target him. Oh. But it, you can't just openly fire on him. You have to line huh. it up. Anyway, I'm avoiding the space laser and I'm doing this and Diamond yeah. Face is about to meet his diamond demise. Not in a weird pool of blood that spills up from the chandelier falling Yeah, right. Uh-huh. He just gets hit with a big laser. So I would, li- I would really not recommend this. Uh. It Also, every mission feels like the final mission of a game, but not in a good way. It's uh. all climax, which is bloody Bond, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is also Eurocom. They did the last game we did last week. Which wasn't bad, if I recall. Yeah, it's okay. And they also did a GoldenEye Reloaded. Uh-huh. Which is like a remake of Goldeneye because they yeah. couldn't do it exactly. Anyway, here's Diamond Face. Oh, that's the famous. Demise. That's the famous Ram. It's the from famous the movie. Ram. Oh, look at these sweet ass cars. Oh no, my face, wow. my face, <laughs> and the rest of my body. Also, the load times really long. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, it was clearly rushed. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of it. I also don't like that they didn't use the likenesses of the other Bonds. And they're all modernized. So he's got his smartphones, but he's in like a 60s lair. Some of the original Bond girls and villains, and sometimes it isn't. It's just... It's just strange. I think it's because they made a bunch of decisions early on and then it was too late to change all of them. They're like, well, Daniel Craig's got the contract. Let's make it... Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's modernise this. And then they're like, oh, do we have enough artists to modernise all the lairs? No? Okay, then. Well, <gasps> James, you probably I did probably it. probably did it. Nice. 
It's also not the voice of Daniel Craig, though it's pretty good. He kind of okay. nails it. Because at first I'm like, oh, bloody hell, Daniel Craig's really phoning in on this one. But then huh. I'm like, the guy who's playing Daniel Craig is doing an excellent Daniel Craig phoning it in. <laughs> right. He's really nailing they're it. Like, they're like, okay, guy who's doing the voice. You, you, you know you've got your incredible Daniel Craig impression. We'll do it imagining that you've still got another bond on your contract and you don't want to do it and also you're doing this video game for some reason did you see jinx do you remember the character jinx yeah when's when's jinx going to appear on screen <laughs> so i'll just take the silence off because who cares at this point right yeah right it's a really quick get out of the way lady i yeah, want to see jinx on screen <laughs> i know and it's so dark in a lot of the missions i don't know who i'm shooting at i have no idea what's happening yeah Look, the thing is, they're a great developer. They've made some great Bond games. Uh -huh. But it's clear that they didn't have the time to yeah, make this properly. Because right. I think they would have done a really good modern shooter. But instead they were kind of... Clearly they had to get this out before Skyfall and this is where we are. And now for some reason, 10 years after Die Another Day, uh -huh. they make the Die Another Day game. <laughs> right? So that means Pierce Brosnan's time as Bond in video games technically yeah. extends from 1997 all the way up to 2012. That's pretty which incredible. Which is crazy to yeah. me. I mean, that being said, mm. this is... A, bad? I would say, yeah, I mean, it's bad, but as apart from Goldeneye, this is his most memorable Bond. For good or well, that's de true, definitely ill. That's, a lot of that is kind of coloured us looking at these movies. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. Because like, I just remember all the dumb things. And watching some of the other ones, specifically the first two, I'm like, there's some good stuff here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But sort of, it was sort of that middle era where you'd, you'd I think... Asking the general public mm. to name something that happened in that. They'd be hard-pressed to think of anything, yeah, you know? you're not wrong. He couldn't shoot lightning in the, in the movie. Well, we're not playing the movie. We're playing we're the exciting playing the, video that's game. That's true, yeah, yeah. Do you want to give me a prompt? Thank you. So I have to wait <laughs> till he kind of it gives me... It's, uh, it's This mission's over, by the way. Like, I've won. Oh, right. It's uh -huh. just a series of very small prompts. What if you don't understand quick time events, though? Well, believe me, I've done this a million times <laughs> to get here. I understand it. It's just a terrible boxing mechanic. Oh, right. Uh -huh. So you just... It tells you exactly what to do and you do it. Anyway, so I can put my controller down because this is finished. <laughs> so if everybody could just watch this cutscene. They worked hard on these electrical effects. They're not well, going to let did. them go to waste, are they? That being said, also, my favourite line genuinely from Die Another Day where he's like, Oh, look! Parachutes for the both of us! They take it out. They don't actually <laughs> put it in here. Yeah, right. So, great. You don't even see him go into the, the jet the engine. engine. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. all you want. That's right. Okay, actually, I have to escape here. So, forgive me. I actually do have to do some gameplay, everybody. Right. If you could just give me a minute. I thought you meant you had to escape from the room. Just for a moment to get <laughs> your thoughts in real life. If I could. If you could just give me a goddamn minute. So, I don't oh shoot God. anybody on the way out. You had to go, like, 15 metres then and, and open Jinx the door. Jinx falls down and I just ignore her. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Get well, up. That's classic Bond. I feel. <laughs> Isn't it just? It's the same escape as in the movie. Come on. Oh, I can't wait for you to control to this uh, helicopter. Oh, yeah, is that what you're waiting for? Yeah, I'm waiting for you be... to take the controls of the helicopter. <laughs> I noticed you oh. put your controller down again, though. You do great jokes, and that's yeah. why I <laughs> yeah. enjoy doing those videos oh. with you, Mason. And that's, that's it. I got 66%. What are you going to do with all your XP? <laughs> like, now really you've earned question. that. Anyway, it's bad. It's a bad game. And uh, don't get it or play it. Don't pay $30 like I did because it's not available digitally. And oh, buy no. the physical disc, which will now sit in your house for the rest of your life because you never throw away any of your video games for some reason. You could. This could be it. Look, I'm not... Oh, there's no job. Yeah. Look, I'm just saying this could be it. This could be... I mean, you know, we talk mm. about we talk about these movies and these games. We have a little bit of fun, a bit of banter. That's but I'm true. saying this could be a real healing moment for you. <laughs> Take the disc, snap it in half. All right, I will. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're a coward. Well, unless, well, unless, unless you can't do it, because it's like, it's like, you know. Oh, <laughs> this is incredibly unsatisfying. It's, Are you kidding me? He thought it had, it's he thought can't it, even give me this one thing, this stupid fucking game and movie. Fucking. <laughs> I told you, you didn't have the stones. Now, every week I like to go, Mason, I've got some clothing report questions for you. I'm ready. And I thought, look, do I talk about his little Cuban outfit? I mean, I could, obviously. I could talk about it for days. But what I really want to talk about is when he gets back to the hotel mm -hmm. and he's got his shaggy beard and his shaggy hair and he just walks in with his pyjama top open. I feel it was closed in the, the prior scene and he's and he's just he's about to enter the hotel and he's like, well, I'm looking pretty rough and tumble. Yeah. Better show my chest hair so everyone's intimidated. Everyone you knows know? who I am. That's right. 
What is that? Like, what kind of power play is that? What is he right? doing? Yeah. You don't want to do up your shirt? And you don't, You're a fucking maniac. Get it all, together. And you know what? You know what? It's rude to do it to service staff. You know what I mean? It really because, is. Because the whole deal is like, you recognize me, don't you? I'm James Bond, right? And he's put this guy, he's put this dude in an uncomfortable position <laughs> where he has to knock back this guy. And then he's like, surprise, I'm your, I'm your best customer. <laughs> I've got a beard and no shirt on for some yeah. reason. You know? It's rude. That's right. Just be like, hello, my name's James Bond. Yeah. My friends call me James Bond. <laughs> They say, hello, James Bond. Anyway, I'm a regular customer. I'm on your system. Yeah. But I've lost all my clothes and my money because, yeah, of, right. because of Korean torture. <laughs> uh, if you could just check. Just be like, recognize me? Why would they? It's, this guy doesn't know you. Yeah. Jesus. And because obviously you've gained weight in prison also. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Also, I want to mention this, and Ben's going to put in a terrific montage. Okay. Some of the worst quips and one-liners I've ever seen in a James Bond movie. Because normally you can do one or two and you get away with it, but this mm -hmm. is just constant. It's just non-stop. Saved by the bell. Thanks for the kiss of life. I've been known to keep my tip up. Point taking. Take it Mr. Bond's been explaining his Big Bang Theory. Oh, yeah, I think I got the thrust of it. Three, this! Bitch. It's like we're going down together. <laughs> How's that for a punchline? Anyway, as it is with all of these movies, they covered most of the budget with product placement. $120 million worth through 20 companies. This one's particularly egregious, I feel. Sometimes it's mm. quite subtle. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah. not as much. Anyway, I just wanted to circle back because I do this every week. Does this movie end with James Bond, Pierce Brosnan, lying on top of a woman like it does in nearly all of his films except the first one. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> except also, they're lying in jagged diamonds. I don't, I don't understand things. they live for danger. <laughs> They've both wanted to do this for years. They've just never had the chance. They live for micro cuts and slowly bleeding out. Yeah, exactly. Great, and they're like, really oh my good. God, so many people died. Yeah. So many Still people good. died mining these. James, would you like some, some of Meso's miscellaneous notes? It's my favourite segment. You know I do. Meso's miscellaneous manifesto. <laughs> okay, when Gustav Graves is, is introduced, uh, I thought to myself, I can't believe someone would use the Union Jack parachute for evil. <laughs> it's always been it's always been a force for good. That's really Bond, true. Austin Powers probably. Yeah, Austin Powers. Probably, probably Richard Branson at some point. <laughs> no, Stretch, <laughs> stretching it a bit. But still. <laughs> the intention wasn't evil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I really like John Cleese's cue in this. Me too. Uh I, I feel like there was a Holy Grail flesh wound joke yes, built there into was, there. Yeah, yeah, but I feel yeah. he's 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 really well suited. I kinda wish he would have gotten another another go around. Well he did, and we'll talk about it. I've written here. It'd be very funny if Bond got to Jinx when the laser had already gone halfway through it. That'd be funny. <laughs> and it'd like, be like something, something uh, cutting remark, I don't know. Splitting headache. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's you, split the difference. Yeah, that's you, true. You've been cut in half by a laser. Yeah, yeah. I have many questions about the VR simulator that is in this movie. Mate, you and me both. First of all, it's so realistic, it can include both cleaning your gun or filling in <laughs> detailed paperwork. Because that's how when Bond's in it, that's how it starts. Yeah. He's just cleaning his gun with a... Does he have to hold the... the does he Does he the, come out of it holding the gun, though? Because maybe that's a real gun. But he was also sitting in a chair. Right? How does that work? I don't know. Does Q come in and pull the chair out when he right. stands up? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But also, that sequence, in, in, in any other character, you'd be like, this is obviously VR. Because yeah. Money Penny's killed... And like all his co-workers are killed and he just breezes past him. It only makes sense if you're the heartless monster that is James Bond. Because <laughs> any other character in that position would be like, oh my god, it's my friend Moneypenny. Yeah. <laughs> whose first name I know. But I <laughs> And finally they get it on yeah, in there. Yeah, that's right. But, it, but yeah, she's Gross. filling in she's filling in like a full mission report. <laughs> Did they make it to the she's whole really thing? She's really into it. Yeah. Do you know what oh, I mean? I guess, oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She can't get off unless it's the, the unless whole, all the, the whole details thing, yeah. are in there, yeah. Uh, there's a point at which uh, Bond is infiltrating the resort laboratory situation oh yeah I've just noted here it's very handy when security cameras have external power cables that you can remove without getting caught on camera uh, look I do have a note from last week yeah uh, if you'd like to put this in somehow I don't know it's gonna go right here oh my god <laughs> alright perfect <laughs> look in the previous movie the action kicks off when a bunch of money is primed as an explosive oh yeah and then, then a, a, a hit, hitman's target sort of walks in and, and sets off a radio transmitter that blows it all up and he dies. He discovers that uh, the money is explosive because it's been treated with uh, with something containing urea. Yeah. They make a, a point of that in the in the briefing. They say, oh, the explosive was, uh, it contained urea. Um, I, I didn't say it at the time, but that's the primary component in P. <laughs> so so Bond spends a significant point. He spends almost the entire action sequence pursuing the, the, the assassin. 
with pee on his hands. <laughs> Maybe that I'm was saying. his own pee and he didn't admit it. And he was like, yeah, that definitely had, that had piss on it. <laughs> he pissed on his hands. Yeah. He didn't wash his hands. He did, he pit, look, and, and also he, he gets ice out of the, yeah, he gets does, ice out of the it. ice container. He puts it in his drink. His drink had pee in it. Anyway, can this well, be a separate video? Just put this up. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little extra note. So on the future of this franchise, uh-huh. Pierce Brosnan has talked about this recently. But Pierce, also, Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Yes. Pierce Brosnan recently came out how he met with Tarantino about a follow-up. Uh, right. Which I remember also happening at the time and Tarantino wanted to take it back to its roots and do it kind of a more retro themed Bond movie, which is where I want the series to go. I want it to go back to the 60s. Obviously that didn't work out. He also mentioned in a GoldenEye watch through recently oh, yes. that he'd definitely come back as a villain if yeah. asked. Would you return as a villain? If asked, yes. Which has never been done before, which I think could be really interesting. But the other thing is, this isn't his last performance as James Bond. The same with Q or R. Because in the game Everything or Nothing, which we have covered in Caravan yeah, of Garbage, that's right. that is the last Pierce Brosnan James Bond role. Oh. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, because they, they rep- reprise their roles in a Visa commercial or something. <laughs> yeah, well, they also do that. But it's also a much better game than the one we played, but yeah, right. also a much better movie than Die Another Day in a lot of ways. That's a shame, but also good. Yeah, it's a good game. It's a mixed feeling for me. I love mixed feelings. <laughs> me too. How do you feel about Brosnan in general, though? Because this is his least favourite Bond film. He wanted it grittier. He wanted less gadgets. He's openly said before that Goldeneye was the one for him, and then it's just kind of whatever after that. And even Roger Moore was like, I hated that one too. <laughs> but what did you? What, what do you think of his legacy as Bond? I think it's more solid than I remember it being Same, at yeah. the time. And There's at, pro- least, at least two very solid ones. Yes. And that's also hindsight because when you're living in it, it's hard to, you don't have that perspective on that's it. That's true. Kind yeah. of looking back. But yeah. yeah, I think he did really well in the role, to be honest. Yeah. In some pretty shitty films. Yeah, I think I think he was kind of at the mercy of, again, the Bond formula, which is which is sort of reaching for stuff that is popular at the time. Yeah. And also just looking back at the old franchise and being like, what, what, a, what did people like in the old stuff? Let's just pile that in, especially in the last yeah, couple. You know? Absolutely. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is, uh, this is, I believe, the best Bond game. Yeah. I mm. think it makes you feel... It probably doesn't have the best controls necessarily because it's a bit kind of pre-Gears of War. It's certainly the best Pierce Brosnan game. Oh, it's certainly. It's better than Mamma Mia, the game. <laughs> it's better a, than the Taylor of Panama game. It's better than Again, the Thomas Crown have, Affair. Didn't have a clothing line. This is actually the last canonical appearance of... Pierce Brosnan's James Bond. This came out after it's canonical. Die Another Day. Is it's canonical. That, who is that? That's, That's uh, Shannon, American Pie. American Pie lady. Yeah. Shannon Elizabeth? Is Shannon Elizabeth. Yeah. It's got Maya, the popular early 2000s singer. Maya? It's got, yeah, sure. From, from it's got Moulin Rouge. There's Butter. The song. Yes. It's got uh, Willem Dafoe as the villain. Nice. It's got Jaws. Jaws is and actually back. got the Jaws guy, even though, Keel. even though he doesn't talk, so I don't know <laughs> why. They got it. What they did is they got a coke. You know how they replicate horses' hooves with coconuts? Yeah. They got two coconut halves, and they put some metal foil in the middle. <laughs> Very good. Or some, some old tin cans, and they just clank clanked. Oh, I love it. All right. Uh, so I thought Speaking we could... of great cans. Oh, so good. I thought we could play some of the best... Ooh. Bond-esque moments. Okay, let's do it from this game. Uh, I'm gonna kick. You can kick it off, Mason. Are these the most Brosnan-esque? I guess so. Great. Do you want to do a repelling one where you're repelling down a wall, being a Bond? Yes. Okay, here we go. I remember being famously bad at this. Let's go operative. You can, I'm, I'm making it easy for you. Okay, great. Here we go. Look, I know people love Goldeneye, and it is a good game for its time. But this one, you get the gadgets, you got the girls, you got the Defoes. It's all happening. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Heidi Klum's in this. That's right. <laughs> now, exactly. Like I, I never liked Goldeneye because it was you had to play in like a tiny little yeah. quarter of the screen, you can and I was never, I was never any good at the shooting. But if if it was a game about seducing the Bond ladies, now that's that's, <laughs> that's a game, a game. <laughs> I can get into. Hey, ladies, you wanna you wanna see my stamp collection? You wanna? Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm so Brosnan with this. Got a gun. I've got a repelling line. All right. How do I do this? Uh, forward. Nice. <laughs> Woo! This is going very well so far. Very good, Brosnan. Nice. That's a pretty good likeness as well. Yeah. Get to go to the steam. Okay, I can do this. Steam your face. Nice. Want to go this way? Do you reckon they've slimmed Brosnan down for this one? Oh, absolutely. I remember, can I know, leap a thing? Not really. Little fact about uh, Pierce Brosnan. How do, the, I, how do I shoot, guys? You don't have a gun out. Oh, nice. How do yeah, I get a gun out? disarmed. One of the directional buttons. Nice. There we go. There we go. You're not going <laughs> to live very long. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have to hold it down, do I? I get. I don't remember the, the control. It's not like a traditional 
shooter. Oh, okay, great. Why don't you get, why don't you get the shooting stuff down, Pat, while you're hanging off the side of a building? Oh, yeah, while I you're safe that. with yeah, all the explosions. Yeah, nice. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Got it? No. You just did it's it. Not... You just shot it. Oh, did I? All Try right. Try L1 and sh and shoot. Okay, great. <laughs> because you don't actually, it auto-targets. And then oh, you there can you go. aim within that reticle. Okay, I've got a gun. Here we go. Here we I don't have a gun anymore. <laughs> No, I don't what know what's... R1! I'm doing R1! Oh, R2! I'm doing R2! What was that? What was that punch button? That's X. Okay. Square. That's square. Okay, I've got my gun out. Now what? Right, target. Which is what? The one you were targeting with before. I don't remember. <laughs> Look, I was mashing all the buttons. There we go. Side. Oh, no! You did it! You nice. shot him! Nice! <laughs> okay. Finally! What a spy! <laughs> Bam, you're dead. All right. Oh, this is... You know what? This is unpleasant shooting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Am I gonna, have I got health regen or not? No, th I think there's a, some body armor around here somewhere. There's okay, a guy nice. left. Yep. Oh, so good. I'm very good at this. And you thought Bond was no... <laughs> I've run out of bullets, I think. This is the worst thing I've ever seen anyone do. <laughs> right? Can you swap guns by pressing the directionally? Yep. There you go. There you, go. you got a desert eagle. Oh, there we go. Thermovision. Should I use thermovision? Oh, I'm what? out of bullets. I got four bullets in this. You got four bullets. It's a strong gun, though. Nice. Shoots eagles. Oh, nice. Is it exclusively if you're shooting eagles? Correct. Nice. No, no. It shoot. It fires eagles out of it. <laughs> oh, right. And of course, eagles can't kill eagles. So. No. It's the laws of nature. <laughs> I used a bullet <laughs> on a wall. You're about to die. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> Maybe we should have practiced on this one before we gave it a go. Nah. Oh, no. Well, at least I died with a desert eagle in my hand. Do you want to try a different level, a driving level? Or a driving level. Okay, let me let me find you one. Okay, good. I even remember the theme song. Give me everything or nothing at all. Oh, you don't I'd rather one? have everything. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, if I had to choose. Yeah, right? The so one where I can wear a tan suit? <laughs> this, okay, I'll give you this one. This one you can actually choose between... This is what I like about this game. Yes. So this one, you have to chase a train, but you can choose between a car or a motorcycle. Okay. But it's not highlighted that you can do it. So if you go left, you can go to a Bond car. Okay. Go right, you can go to a motorcycle. Mm, but look, Brosnan was all about the Bond motorcycle, but I don't think <laughs> they're any good. So I'm going to choose Bond car. Okay, fair enough. So Invisible Bond car, apparently. Yeah, man. So many explosions. Ah, this, is what, this is what Brosnan Bond was all about. Dams and explosions! Dams and explosions and product placement. So I can't <laughs> wait to see what kind of car it is. It's right in front of you. There you yeah. see, it's oh, invisible. what is this? <laughs> and I'm like, whatever this is. It's so sexy. On, You're on the check. wrong side. Yeah, I know. Hang on. Oh, it's a Porsche he's Cayenne. A, he's a British The agent. worst Porsche. <laughs> wow. No, don't, don't give me a cool Porsche. Give me a bloody... You get a cool Porsche like much later. You're going to go. You're going to catch a yeah, train. Right. Oh, it's right stick to drive. I hate this. <laughs> oh, it's the... Oh. Wait, do I drive through the fire? Yes. All right. This is actually a great game. No, like, I, 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 I play this game to the right. You're going to lose the trait. Oh, God. No, there's a window. Where? To you're right. a liar. <laughs> you going to take the bike or the Porsche? I'm going to take the Porsche. Okay, all right. You're still committed to it, aren't yeah, I'm you? I'm still committed. Commit it to the Porsche. Don't give me a good. Don't give me the Porsche. Don't give me the Clash at Porsche. Don't give me the Porsche Target. Give me the bloody. Give me the, whatever they were promoting at the time. <laughs> the family SUV, the Porsche Cayenne. <laughs> Terrific. All right. It doesn't even look like a Porsche. No. My favourite part of this Porsche is, n did nobody run into it? When it was yeah, invisible. How did he get it here? How did he get did it he here? Exactly. It nice. There's a window. Yeah. There's Dance a window. Into the fire here. Yeah. There. Yeah. You Safety do. first, James. Oh, it's because the controls are bad. I just want to be clear. <laughs> Smash <laughs> into the fire. This is supposed to be a chase. Yeah, I'm chasing. You can use your missiles on that. Oh. Bam. Nice. Did this game just get 10% better? Yeah. All right. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I thought I could smash through the water just like I smashed through the fire. Yeah, that would make sense. Wouldn't it, though? Yeah. You are really not doing this game justice. 
<laughs> Again, I was better at it back in the day yeah. when I had ADHD. That's all true. Right? And but I could fo- laser focus. But now I've got adult problems. These I'm are thinking un- about my tax return. I understand. But these are also unconventional controls for the time. Yeah. So even if you played a lot of third-person shooters, going for the bike. I'm going for the bike. <laughs> Is it an invisible bike? It's a regular bike. It's a visible bike. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, I've got less missiles. Driving a bike. <laughs> <laughs> because you're playing Jump it Jump into the fire <laughs> <laughs> Woo I should point out When this mission goes smoothly It looks amazing There's I'll explosions well, Do you want to do it? Do you no, that's fine right. Woo you, hoo When you've had Woo! your <laughs> Woo Woo I'm having a great time There's the train Nice I should catch up with the train Yes Nice Oh no No this is fine Okay. You've made it, Mason. How cool and smooth is this? Oh, you got Very a cool on your smooth. tail. And you thought Bond games were no good. You said all Bond games are terrible. I did say that. Woo! Use your missiles! Did you say missiles? Missiles! <laughs> oh no, I've lost momentum for a second. That means I'm done. <laughs> Slowly backing up. <laughs> That's the thing about a motorbike, isn't it? They're not very cool to back up. No. But ever, uh, we've said this before. We 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 know that uh, Tom Cruise famously he has somebody who follows behind when he when he goes somewhere on his cool motorbike. Yeah. He has somebody who follows behind him in a van, and then when he parks the motorbike, that guy then reverses the motorbike for him, <laughs> That's so his, he can just peel out on it later. That guy has two jobs: yep. finding Tom Cruise wives That's and right. reversing, reversing his, his motorbike. motorbike. Bam! Bam! I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> to the right. Backing up slow. Wait, have I caught up to the train? Do you wait? Do you see a train? No, but that doesn't mean I haven't caught up to the. Now I'm in the mummy. <laughs> yeah, you're in Tom Cruise's the mummy. Wow. Slide, slide. How do I slide? I can't remember. With my face <laughs> into some rocks. <laughs> I'm nearly out of missile. <laughs> There's the train. Oh, nice. You wouldn't mean nearly out. You've got 23 left. It's not enough for me. I like to have 20. Five missiles minimum of oh, all no, times. Then, yeah, you are nearly out of missiles. That's what then. I thought. Here we go. Do I have to? <laughs> oh, I injured my <laughs> ankle. <laughs> no, damn it. No, damn it. No, no, no. Twisted my ankle. I'm off for weeks. I'm getting MI6 work cover. Yeah, because he was like 54 maybe when this yeah, came right? out. He was an older Bond. Mm. 007. Oh, I've got 007 double... points. Oh, that's right. There's 007 moments that are classic Bond yeah. moments, and you just performed them. Nice. One. What was it? Can you we... did a little a jump. A million dollars. I couldn't tell you what it was. I'm nearly caught up to the train, probably. You can do this. You've got double exhausts. Do you prefer this to the Kia Sorento? Yes, I really do. <laughs> now, what's good about this is when you can't feel this at home, but when I'm on the train tracks, my dual shock control is like. I'll enable YouTube dual shock. Dual shock. Dual socks. Dual socks. USB powered socks. If you go on the side, you won't catch the train. I think it'll slow you down. Okay. Some kind of explosion happening. I think you've got this, Mason. Yeah, you know I have. Here we go. Missiles. <laughs> I failed. It's your turn. Do you want to see some hand-to-hand action? Yes. Or do you want to see some racing? Hand-to-hand. Oh, he's in his Porsche. <laughs> oh, I remember this being a terrible... Oh. Fire! Come on! Yeah, I remember this. There's a secret door. Oh, nice. I've done it. Nice. I found Serena. Nice. She's like, what took you so long? And he's like, I beat so many men to death. <laughs> we need to leave. Don't look. Don't look at him. Do you want to do, you want to do another racing right, level? Like, no. I don't want, you want, to I don't do want a, a punching level. All right, I'll find you. I want a punching level where he wears a tan suit. All right, I'll find you a bond. There we go. Missile? There it is. Okay. Yes. There's a missile. It's also called Vertigo. Oh, okay. Alright, here we go. Like the U2 song. You excited to James Bond? Not really. You excited to Everything or Nothing? Yes. This is also a James Bond documentary called Everything or Nothing. 
Oh, look at that tan suit. I know, right? So casual. So casual. Look at that midriff top. So yeah. casual. They're yeah. both so casual. Oh, I didn't even get to shoot those guys <laughs> with my silent non-flashing gun. <laughs> no, no, that's a trank dart. Oh, yeah. boo. Here we go. Oh, this isn't going to go well for me. How do I shoot again? Uh, L1. Uh, targets yep. and R1 shoots, oh, I think, bad. but some variation on that. So you were doing it for a while and you still have no idea. I played this game so much. Yeah. Bon uh, Bro Brosnan was the most suited Bond. Yeah. Like he never didn't wear a suit, except for one point where he wears like white slacks and a, like a navy blazer. <laughs> we really should have done clothing for Kingsman. That would have been, <laughs> right. been your area. 100%. Well, I killed that guy. I'm 100% I'm, I'm, I'm kill rate at this point, so that's yeah. pretty good. Hey, what are you doing here? Bam, you're dead. I'm, I'm assuming that's his voice. <laughs> hey, what are you? What are you? How do I reload? Is there a reload button? Square, maybe? Dude, it's not targeting, man. What are you? One of them. You've got to face them. Now yeah, what? Well, that's been my problem. <laughs> you're facing the opposite direction. What's going on? It's auto-aim to a, to a degree. But you right. can move the, the little reticle. So, like, you can target them in the head or the balls. Oh, nice. If you choose to. I want to shoot that guy in the balls, but I don't have the balls, if I'm honest. <laughs> or the skill. Yeah. He's off again. How do I change weapons? Uh, the directional buttons. Yeah. Oh, nice. you got a bloody AK-47. You got a sleeper dart. You got some kind of <laughs> EMP. Keep it strapped to my the back of my tan suit. <laughs> okay, this is going very well for me. I feel. Whoever's editing this can edit out the the very slow pace of this. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going forward a foot at a time? Because it's I'm cautious. All right. No, wrong. All right, so that's you got to repel up that. So face the wall. You can press up. I am. No, press up. Sorry, the directional up. Uh, and then press X. Then my vision? No. no. That one. Now press X. Now shoot. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Repel. Got it. Up. Uh, up. Just shoot. X. Nope. Stand back a bit. Yeah. Okay. Do it. Go again. No. Nope. <laughs> give it a bit of give it a bit of room. Give it a bit of breathing room. There Phew! you go. Okay. Should have said give me a bit of. <laughs> Now that's a Bond moment if I ever I... <laughs> that's classic Bond. Put away your gun. Allow yourself to be shot. <laughs> that's right. You're getting the hang of this, man. Thank you. I'm good at murder. Yeah. I'm using my natural talent for murder and I'm putting it to a little game. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I still maintain this is the best Bond game. When you get past the controls, when you get the hang of it. Oh, yeah, lot, sure. Seriously, it's a lot of fun. It is fun. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of times when a slightly good or even good game is played by us, and because this is called Caravan of Garbage, immediately there's people like, this is the greatest game ever made! How dare you! How dare you! Yeah. It's not all garbage, <laughs> but okay. maybe we should think of renaming it. What do you think, Mason? Nah, mm. it's a good name. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 oh. it's, it's fun to do, I'll tell you what. Here we, oh, I hit and shot, mate. Now, I know the AK-47 and the AK-74 are different guns, but I like to think they've called it the AK-74 just so impressionable children don't go out and buy an AK-47. Probably. They're like, I'd, I want to buy one, but... Do you think Brosnan was the toughest Bond? Look at his butt. Do you think he's the Bond which would crack eat, which would crack the earliest in interrogation? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If he whipped his nuts with a rope. In Die Another Day, allegedly, he, you know, he bloody... Oh, but he doesn't. He holds out in Korea. That's what I'm saying, but I, I don't think in real life he would. Yeah. <laughs> Actor Pierce Brosnan. You think if Pierce Brosnan was held by the North Koreans? I'm saying, I'm <laughs> saying the actor Pierce Brosnan would not withstand assorted tortures. Yes, you're right. That guy has a rocket launcher. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> Why aren't you dead yet, you son of a bitch? That guy is incredibly strong. Yeah, but also I've withstood about four <laughs> rocket launches. That's a really good point, actually. So I'm also very tough. You both got skills, all right? What do you want from me? Do you think it's down there? Yeah, you repel automatically. It's Ooh. automatic on the way down. Dun -dun 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 bond moment. That would be funny if you didn't. And died? <laughs> that would be classic me. If you like, it always works. Oh, he's dead. <gasps> your thermovision, you can oh, use it. Perfect. Or your night vision or whatever. There we go. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I feel like you're going to get lost and die in here. Oh, yeah. It's Do you hot. think these guys can see in the dark? They'd have to, surely. No. We can't really tell. Look at, that, look at that sneaky <laughs> that sneaky chappy. Look at him. Hello, who's this? <laughs> oh, it's Bond. Oh, no, I'm dead. I'm bloody dead. Ooh. What's this? Oh, uh, you got a 007. You got another 007 That's moment. That's right. When Bond picks up his classic rocket launcher. I think this was just to get the rocket. I don't think there's anything down here. Oh, nice. How was that? Oh, there's some armor as well. Very good. Man, I'm good at this. You're so good at this I'm game. I'm good at video games. 
They know, they know you took the rocket launcher. Yeah, like, that was our grandfather's rocket launcher. <laughs> oh, look at this sneaky. He's a sneaky. Look at, this, look at this buddy. Sneaky, sneaky chappy. I love how you find them cute and amusing. Yeah. You're like, look at this guy. All right. You're going to out of here. Off. <laughs> I think there's a quicker way to do that. I bet there isn't. Press X. Yeah, there we go. I would like to see a modern day version of this. Like with modern mechanics. There's actually a game called, uh, I've got it actually there. It's called Bloodstone on the PS3. Oh, yeah. Which is a third is person. Is Willem Dafoe also the villain in that? No. Go right. But but it does have Cray. He voices it. Nice. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's like what? a standard. <laughs> oh, look at this guy. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. You're dead, you son of a bitch. And it's like a it's like a pretty decent first person, uh, third person shooter. Yeah. There's not as much Bondish kind of stuff as this. <laughs> but, uh,. Yeah, it's more kind of in keeping with the gritty kind of Jason Bourne-esque right, kind right, of right. moments. Wait, so. did I come from here? No, no, this, this is where you're going. Nice. You're, you're like a level up. I am a level up. Not an ability. Oh. Oh, look at that tan suit. So tan. So See, tan. This, is, this is my wheelhouse, man. <laughs> this is why I've survived so long. I'm in a tan suit. <laughs> so you need some. So when you're in like an uncool car, you're yeah. like, Ugh, I my can't one do it. skill, My one skill is keeping like light-coloured fabrics clean. <laughs> That's why I'm so good at this. <laughs> you actually might get up to a... It's actually a pretty interesting moment. If, you're getting shot! Oh, sorry, I was... I was <laughs> Stop looking at your phone! Your wife tweeted something, all right? <laughs> Go, Mason. Yeah, all right. Oh, I see. <laughs> He's clipped it to his belt, along with his pager. Shoot them all! I'm Kill shoot. every one of them! I'm shooting! Shoot that guy! I'm shooting shoot that guy! Shoot the guy in the middle! I'll shoot the guy in the middle, too! Shoot him in the head! Move the little reticle up! I did that by moving. Very good. Thank you. Oh, there's an uplink device. Go back to the uplink device. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, it's a modem. Look at it. <laughs> you didn't press it. You didn't press it. There we go. Nice, I got it. Okay. Now do I leap oh, off the side of this building? No, I think you got to go back down. Install uplink device in junction. Oh, Get right. that health to your right. Oh, yeah, nice. There you go. Nice. Does it feel bad, James, that I've done so many Bond moments and you haven't done any You've Bond moments? You've done two moments? Bond moments. One heaps. of them was getting a rocket launcher. One was doing the pissiest jump I've ever seen. There's got to be right. Yeah, I know. Oh. You can move the reticle! Bam, 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 you yeah. can move it! Yeah, all right. Why, why can I not shoot Because those? you can. You got to move the red dot. I'm shooting at him. Just keep going. Just run past no, him. Right, it doesn't fine. matter. <laughs> They're stuck on those wires da, forever. Da, 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 da. See, when you target, you yes. can move the red dot. No, I get it. So you can shoot, you can pinpoint them, like shoot them in the head and stuff. I don't want to, though. You got this, Mason. Thank you. I don't believe you've got it. No, I've got it. Okay, you've got it. To the left. No, nice. it's open door. What is that? What is that? Is that anything? No. It's a pile of garbage. Okay, Just... hang on. <sighs> <You're right>. Jeez! <laughs> Bloody hell! What's going on? <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's right. Cop that, you son of a bitch. Sleepy dart. Rocket four mm. rockets? No, I shouldn't do that. You'll, that's a good gun. Go yeah. back. Yeah, you've got yeah. the most. I shouldn't use the rockets because I will kill myself. Yeah, yeah, in a very enclosed space. Okay, here we go. Use the uplink device to yep. uplink the device. Stall uplink. I did it. I'm glad there's not like a hacking mini game or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Get, Get to, to the top, top of the cliff. cliff. All right. Which way is the cliff? I don't know. Oh man. I assume it's up. Or return to elevator. Okay, so go back. So left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am could, jealous of all your Bond moments. That's right. Okay, yeah. You're going the right way, I think. Okay, no. I don't actually know. There's probably a guy with a rocket launcher. Well, surely... There we go. Yeah, I must, I'll be going the right yeah, way. Yeah, there's guys, yeah. The fact that there's guys that I have to kill. <sighs> You're the best Bond. Thank you. You're doing the best cover. <laughs> do not die. Do you want to Do you want to take it from here, then? No, no, I think you can do it. All right, you're going to get mad. <laughs> probably. Is there health straight ahead? Where? Yes. Nice. Okay, go back and go to the right. Burn it. Nah, 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 nah. This one? Go, yep, down there. You gotta go back to. There's like an elevator near the start, if uh, you remember. Okay. You gotta go left. You've only got three bullets. You're probably gonna switch guns. All right. Yeah! Nice. The elevator is to your left. Wait, hang on. Just get in the elevator. Just go. Yeah, right, hang on. Just kill some guys. Oh no, I'm down to <laughs> rocket launcher. This is a bad. Wait, there was, where's the elevator? To your left. You go out to your left. Okay, oh, this is a bad idea. No, you're doing great! Okay, good. Wait, I should pick up some more bullets. I think that's the end of the level anyway. <laughs> you did it! <laughs> you reached the top of the cliff, confirmed! Nice. Now I can never die. You can never die! Can I show, a show you a sweet yeah, level? Yeah, get in there, mate. So I'll show you what I think is one of the best levels, Mason. Okay. We'll 
Call it a day. All right. It's a chase where you got to chase Jaws in a truck. Nice. But you're on a bike. Now, oh, he looks. So, look how dreamy he He's looks. So dreamy. Oh, they've really, they've really pinned the jowls in. <laughs> they got that jowl slider. You know, there's some games that's like use the whatever, change the size of the whatever. It's the jowls all the way down. <laughs> Did I say this at the start? Yeah, he was the trimmest Bond to start with, and then he was the heaviest by the end. Yeah. I don't know if I ever got finished that fact. All right, mm. here we go. Go Bond. Nah, there's a there's nah, a nah, the nah, only nah. quote because there's some there's some terrible oh god I'm not I know yeah see it's not as easy as you'd think it's exactly there's as easy as I think Ooh. I'm James Bond <laughs> <laughs> there's some terrible Brosnan Bond quotes the the most egregious I feel is he sleeps with a woman named Christmas Jones oh, and he I says I thought Christmas only comes once a year ah uh, that's the, probably the worst one because the entire prep like they built the character around him saying that. It, yes. It's almost like they built the entire movie around him <laughs> saying that. Didn't everyone groan? Yeah, I, in, in, and I turned to the person I brought and I was like, I'm so sorry. Because you wrote it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drive carefully. Ha ha. Ah, oh, fight. you didn't tell me I had a sideways flamethrower. I think your one didn't. Oh, well. Oh, God. Wow, see, not as easy, is it? It's exactly as easy as I remember it. Ah, those guys Lighting men on fire. Here we but anyway, go. my favourite, my favourite Bond, my favourite Brosnan Bond quote. I don't know which movie it's in. I don't know in what context it's in. But at one point he goes, "Not yet." <laughs> it's my favourite. <laughs> I just remembered it because it's he's so jowly in it, <laughs> yeah. and he's like, "Not yet." I got a 007! No, I didn't see it, so it didn't Yay! happen. Yay! James, you're driving the wrong way. <laughs> it, it just regularly in life. Yeah, I think so. I got rockets. You've got cars. They're not the same. It's a pretty cool bike, I must admit. It's so cool. Yeah, your cars and bikes get cooler as you go. I think that did more damage to Do you ever car. drive an Aston Martin? Oh, God, I'm down again! Wow. I don't think so, because I probably didn't have the rights to it. Yeah. Got a shoddy there, mate. And what else do you need? That's right. I'm really... I'm not going to live through this. No, of course not. There's a cool truck slide that I want to get to, and then once we've done that, Mason, mm -hmm. we can all go to our respective homes. That includes people watching this. Even if you're at home. Yep. Go out, you go out your house. Quick do a turn, lap. Do, a do a lap, lap come back in. <laughs> come on, Bond, you can do it. Believe in who you are. Yes. I'm going to do the truck slide. Okay. It's happening. All right. Are you ready? If you think you can. I'm going to bugger this up. Yeah. The idea is you do a sweet slide under the truck as it explodes, okay? Okay, This all right. is happening. All right. I can do this. All right, you ready? Yes. Na, 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 I'm going to light this guy on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> now, if you don't get a James Bond moment for this, <laughs> surely I get a shot. <laughs> I can't wow, believe nothing. I did it. Wow. No, I got one. I got okay, one. Okay, that's go. pretty good. Okay. I was going to say that I, I got one for like picking up a, a rock or whatever, <laughs> and you didn't go up for that. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. You're not going to believe how many times we do this a week. Once. Once, that's right, if you can believe that. But they actually go up early at bigsandwich.co, along with the extended audio edition mm. uh we also have bonus podcasts our podcast the weekly planet where we talk movies and comics and tv shows that comes out a day early mm -hmm. early videos movie commentaries a bunch of other stuff anyways i'm at mr sunday movies on twitter i'm at wikipedia brown on twitter leave us alone please oh yeah no great i was gonna yep <laughs> we'll block you <laughs> yep. don't talk to we'll us we'll preemptively block you we'll we'll see nah, you coming nah, we'll block right. you. goodbye bye grab that jamie guys we'll see you next week